Greetings, I'm Berent, and welcome to the One Stop Co-op Shop. Today we're going to be playing through Arkham Horror, the living card game. We're going to be doing a Mythos Buster production scenario called Consternation on the Constellation. This is from Gen Con, and I want to thank Colin over at One Stop Co-op Shop for letting me borrow this scenario pack. For those of you that don't know, Colin actually lives pretty close to me, and so I was able to just drive over to his house and pick this up, and I'm going to be playing through this scenario pack with two of the new investigators that Fantasy Flight just put out. Those two new investigators are supposed to have a deck of cards already built for you, and you're going to be able to play through one of the scenarios. Now, this scenario may be a little bit too tough for just a basic scenario investigator deck, but we're going to give it a shot. It's going to be lots of fun. Let's go ahead and see who our investigators are. Our first investigator is going to be Jacqueline Fine. Again, like I said, these are from our pre-built new investigator decks that just came out. She's got one power up here that says, when an investigator at your location would reveal any number of chaos tokens, reveal two additional tokens of the revealed tokens, choose and cancel two non-fail tokens or one failed token. Limit once per round. If I get the elder sign, it effect is plus one. And if this effect is canceled or ignored, draw one card. It says underneath, the future can be rewritten. She starts with six health and nine sanity. And her stats are up here. She's got five willpower, three intellect, two fight, and two agility. We're going to see how well she does in our scenario. Now, of course, she comes with her pre-built deck. So we're just going to mix that up a little bit, and we're going to draw some cards once we start playing. But for now, we're just going to leave it right here. And just to tell people, this is not an Arkham Horror playmat. This is actually for Machina Arcana, but I use it for Arkham Horror because it holds cards really nicely. I put the card right here, and any monsters we're engaged with, I go ahead and just throw them right there so we know who they're engaged with. It's kind of a neat little way of doing it, and this is just the way I do it. I don't actually use these very much, though. I do kind of run my sanity, my health, and my resources up these paths a little bit, but sometimes I don't. Sometimes I just pile on the tokens because sometimes it's cool to see a bunch of tokens on your cards. Our next investigator I've chosen to use is Nathaniel Cho. He's a criminal warden. He's a boxer. And it says, when you deal damage to an enemy by an event or a fight ability on an event, deal one additional damage. Limit once per phase. And if I get the elder sign, I get plus one. And if this test is successful during an attack, return an event from your discard pile to your hand. He also says, I must fight on. He also has nine health down here, and he's got six sanity. Now, of course, this means that I have to activate him in order to use it. So we're not going to use this all the time. Like it does say, limit once per phase. He has three intellect, two, or sorry, two intellect, three willpower, five fight, and he also has two agility. He also comes with his own starter deck, so we're going to go ahead and mix that up and get it ready for the game and put it right there. Now let's go ahead and check out the scenario so we know what's going on. We're going to go ahead and read about the Constellation Constellation. It says, get your ticket now for a cruise on the high seas aboard the Constellation, a state-of-the-art ocean liner. What begins as an investigation at sea takes a terrifying turn when a group of fanatical cultists seize control of the ship. Uh, in consternation on the constellation, can a group of investigators stop the cult's plans before something unspeakable is called from the deep? This expansion was a scenario created by the host of Mythos Busters podcast for Gen Con 2019. As such, the cards in Consternation Constellation can be identified by their logo before each card's collector number. And this is their sign down here. So like I said, we did get this from Gen Con, and I'm really excited to do this. Thanks again to Colin for letting me play through this scenario. This story can be played either in standalone mode or in a side story mode. We're, of course, going to be playing in the standalone mode using our standard bag. I am not going to make this any more harder on myself than I already can. If you do play it as a side story, just like most of them, you do have to pay the two experience points in order to play through it. But who knows? You might gain more experience than the two you actually paid for. And besides, it's always fun to go on little side quests when you're playing through your campaign just to break up some of the stuff that's going on in the campaign. I just love the way Arkham Horror has such great feel to it. Time to read about the story of the Constellation Constellation and what brought us here. It says, welcome aboard. Join me on the other side of the sea. All your questions will find answers beyond the deep. You stare one more time at the cryptic note that sits on your table alongside a brand new set of first class tickets offering passage aboard the SS Constellation, a luxury ocean liner sailing from Boston to London in a few days time. The unmarked envelope had arrived just yesterday, promising a welcome solution to a vexing affair. In the past few weeks, several collections of esoteric artifacts in Arkham have been ransacked, accumulating in the murder of an employee of the Misantonic Historical Society. Your contacts have informed you that similar burglaries have 
taken place in Boston, in Samoth, and New York. Strangely, nothing has been reported missing as yet except for a few records and a book. What could these people be looking for? You have a growing fear that it is something dastardly indeed. With leads running dry, hope hopping aboard an ocean liner in response to a note from an unknown sender seems only one step above a wild goose chase, but it's the best chance you may get. With that in mind, you grab the tickets and head out the door. We're going to go ahead and look at the setup of the Consternation Constellation. First, we're going to gather all the cards of the following encounter sets, Consternation the Constellation, Deep Ones, and Sinking Ship. These sets are indicated by the following icons respectively. We're going to go ahead and put the cargo room and open water into play. Each investigator begins play at the cargo room. Set each other location aside out of play. Based on the number of players in the game, if there is exactly one in the game, no changes are made. If there are exactly two players in the game, remove one copy of taking on water from the game. So that's what we're going to do because we have two players. Again, if there's three or four, we're also going to take out an extra copy of taking on water. To continue the setup, we're going to go ahead and set the five crates of goods assets aside. We're then going to shuffle the tablet of dragon and two other random crate goods assets together and remove the remaining crates of goods assets from the game. All three cards should be showing only the unrevealed crate of goods side so the players don't know which crate of goods is the tablet of dragon. Set Luther Marsh and each card from the deep ones and sinking ship encounter set aside out of play. Search the gathered encounter set for one copy of order enforcer. Spawn it at cargo room. Shuffle the rest of the cards from the consternation on the constellation encounter set to build the encounter deck. So there you have it, the setup for Consternation on the Constellation. I'm really excited to get to this one. I'm a huge fan of going on ships and cruises and things like that. So this will be a lot of fun to see what happens on this cruise in particular. These poor investigators, I don't think know what's going to happen to them. And hopefully they make it through alive. If you're excited to see if they can, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop. Here's our Agenda 1A card for the adventure. It says, Captured! You were awoken from your slumber by screams in the night, only to find the ship has been taken by hooded figures. You now find yourself trapped in the dark corner of the cargo room, guarded by a member of the cult. This particular brute stands nearly six and a half feet tall and watches you with wary eyes. Each copy of Order Enforcer gets plus one health per investigator and gains the aloof and elite keyword. Investigators cannot play or put into play items, assets, including item weaknesses, or leave the cargo room. And of course, there's only two Doom on this location, so this one's going to go pretty fast. To begin our adventure, let's go ahead and look at our Act 1A card. It says, Think Fast! You need to find a way out of this predicament before the cultists decide upon a more permanent solution for you. So the Order Enforcer gains the ability to have an action parlay. I can test my willpower to trick the big lug. If you succeed, an investigator at your location may place one of his or her clues on him. If there are clues equal to the amount of investigators, which would be two on the Order Enforcer, discard him. Our objective, if there are no enemies in play, advance. So let's go ahead and look at that Order Enforcer that we found. He is going to have three fight, two health, plus he gets plus one per investigator. He has four health. He has three agility, and he is a human cultist, and he preys on the most clues. But remember, he does have aloof, so he's not actually going to engage anybody unless we engage him or do something bad. Hunters retaliate, and it says, when the Order Enforcer attacks you, discard a non-story item asset you control to reduce the damage by one. So we can do a little bit of reducing of damage, and it says, even cultists need muscle, or even cults need muscle. Wow, yep, he's some muscle, all right. And since both of us are in the cargo room, we're going to go ahead and take a look at that card as well. It says, the large room contains stacks of boxes, crates, and assorted luggage. 
there is also an access door that leads outside to the surging waters. Let's go ahead and flip it over. It has three shroud and it has two clues there. What do you know? We need two clues to get by this guy. It says test, was it willpower or intellect, sorry. Search the top X cards of your deck for an item asset and add it to your hand. Where X is the amount you succeed by, shuffle your deck limit once. So we can go ahead and find some item assets, but we can't play any with this guy in here right now. So we're going to go ahead and throw some clues on there. So here's our two clues. We're just going to go ahead and throw them on here, and hopefully we can get them and give them to the order enforcer. Let's go ahead and draw our hand size of five for our investigators. But before we do, I do want to mention that the weaknesses that are in the deck, of course, are her signature weakness. And the one that actually comes with the deck is its basic weakness. I use that one in here as well. So we kept the deck as pure as possible. I know you're supposed to randomly draw one, but I wanted to keep them really pure and really cool to just see how these all decks work by themselves. I've also gone ahead and given ourselves our five resources. I've got these neat cubes that I get from Etsy, which they've also had a lot of other neat little tokens here too. For example, our spell ones we can put on. We have our doom tokens, our clue tokens, some ammunition, health, and sandy tokens as well. These I got off of Etsy. These are really cool. It's from a guy called Reality Foundry. His name's John. He over there on Etsy has these up. He, I don't have any relationship with him. I don't know anything about him. I just knew that he made some cool tokens. I found them on Etsy and I picked them up and I want you guys to be aware of these as well because they look pretty cool. So if you're thinking about blinging out your game, this might be a way to go. He's over in Egan, Minnesota, which is the other reason I want to mention it because, well, I'm from Minnesota and it's nice to support a local business. So we're going to go ahead now and draw up our five cards and see we get one two three four five if you're interested in the tokens i'll leave a link in the description below let's see here we have found infallible truth it has three uses it spend one charge to evade this evasion attempt uses willpower instead of evasion and if you succeed you deal one damage to the evaded enemy if i get an elder sign i get plus one or zero token is revealed during this evasion attempt i lose one resource all right that's our first card we have the next one oh we have our weakness now we can't start with our weakness in our hands so we're going to go ahead and shuffle that back in and we have parallel fates augury took look at the top four cards of the encounter deck reveal a random token from the chaos bag if it has any of these symbols, shuffle those cards into the encounter deck. Otherwise, return them to the top in the encounter deck in any order. We have that one. We also have these ritual candles, which is an item. I can exhaust this, and after I, one of these symbols is revealed, during a test you are performing, you get plus one skill value to that test. And our last one is precinct. This is an augury as well. Max one committed per skill test. After you commit per persistent, persistent to a skill test, name odd or even or symbol. After the test ends, if the chaos token is of the numbered type, name type, sorry, is revealed during this test, you may return it, a spell card from your discard pile to your hand. So those are our cards. Of course, we can choose to mulligan if we want. And I think there's some cards here we're not gonna need. Of course, I have to mulligan this card and we're gonna go through and see if I want any of these. We're gonna go ahead and mulligan these three cards along with this one and grab four more and see so we get one, two, three, four and see if these are any better. We got our defiance. It is innate it, before revealing a chaos token for this test. Choose one of the following symbols. Ignore the effect of the chosen symbol during the test. Let's see what else we got. We've got the robes of endless night. It's an item clothing. I can use this when a spell card exhausts the robes of endless night to reduce the cost of that card. That sounds really good. Another set of ritual candles, and we've got the voice of Ra. Gain one resource, reveal three random chaos tokens from the chaos bag. For each one of these symbols revealed, gain an additional two resources. Okay, actually, these are real, a lot better than what I had. So we're going to go ahead and put those with our other card, and we're going to put those into our hand. We're then going to go ahead and shuffle these back into our deck and go ahead and draw for Nathaniel Cho. Let's see what Nathaniel's going to get. And also, I want to mention that Nathaniel is going to be our lead investigator. That's another thing I need to do. We're going to go ahead and draw our first five cards and see what we have found. We have found Gertra Wagner. This is is awesome. I am a huge fan of this card. Ally Hunter, you get plus one fight, and then after you defeat an enemy, I can exhaust Wagner to deal one damage to her and discover one clue at your location. That's awesome. We're definitely keeping that card. Safeguard, after another investigator moves from your location to a connecting location, exhaust safeguard to move to another location. That might be one we are going to get rid of. Counterpunch, fast play after an enemy attacks you. Even if the attack is canceled, I can fight this attack and attack the target enemy. That's not too bad. Oh, a vicious blow. Who never wants a vicious blow? If this skill test is successful during an attack, the attack deals plus one damage. And they have Monster Slayer. This attack deals plus one damage. Oh my gosh, there's so many good cards here. I'm just getting rid of safeguards. It's the only one I don't want. We're going to draw one more card and see what we get. Oh, we got. can't get our weakness. 
We're going to grab another one. We've got Flesh Ward. It has four charges. When you are dealt damage and or horror from an enemy attack, exhaust Flesh Ward and spend one charge. Cancel one damage or horror just dealt from that attack. Okay, those are some really good cards. We're going to shuffle these back into this deck. Since this is our first turn, we're not going to be doing any of the Mythos phase. We're going to go right into our Investigator's phase, and I'm going to choose to use Nathaniel Cho first. He's going to go ahead and see what he can do about this room. Now, we have two clues in this room that have a Shroud value of three, and his Intellect is only a two, and Jacqueline's is only a three, so it's going to be pretty tough to get those clues without some help from some cards. Now, of course, Nathaniel's a boxer. He sees this big, giant Order Enforcer over six feet tall, and he wants to take him on. He has a, wants to really go for a challenge, and since he really doesn't have too much that's going to help me get the clues. We're going to try to beat this guy up. But before we do that, we're going to go ahead and pay all five of our resource cubes to go ahead and play down Gert. Was it Gertie Wagner? She's going to go ahead and go down, so I'm going to gain plus one fight when I actually do go ahead and engage him, and I can actually gain a clue if I want to have her take some damage. So we're going to put that in our area. Now, that is not an item, so I'm able to play that one. Now, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to spend our second action to go ahead and engage this guy. Because he's aloof, I have to spend the action to actually engage him. And now with the third action, we're going to go ahead and play Monster Slayer. It's going to give us a fight action, and the attack deals plus one damage. So we're going to play that. Now before we do that, we are also going to add Vicious Blow to the action here and use our plus one fight. So we now have plus one, or the plus one fight here, and he also gains one from Gertie. So we've got plus two fight to this attack. And we have a normal base of five. So we have a seven versus his three. So we're going to take our magic chaos bag of death and destruction and see if it's going to be making me sad all game or if we're going to be a, have a happy time. We have gotten a skull. So we're going to go ahead and look at our skull thing. It says right here that our skull... Oh, this is hard and expert. We're not playing hard and expert. It's the easy standard. We're going to get negative two. Negative four if your location is exhausted. It is not an exhausted location, so this is a negative two, which means we did hit him and we succeeded. He has four health. We have done one extra damage from our Vicious Blow. We've also done one extra damage from our Monster Slayer. We do one damage for succeeding, so that's three. We're also going to use Nathaniel Cho. It says when you deal one damage to an enemy by an event or... Fight ability on an event, deal one additional damage. I can do this one per phase. And we did use an event to hit him, so we took him out in one shot. That is going to, of course, be his last action. We're going to go ahead, discard our Enforcer, and we're going to advance our Act Deck. Before we do, we are going to gain one damage on Gert so that we can gain a clue in that location. I think clues are going to be hard to come by, so I think gaining them as fast and as early as possible is going to be better for us. Our act deck states, objective, if there are no enemies in play, advance. So we're going to go ahead and advance this, and we're going to go ahead and read it. It says, with the muscle taken care of, you now find your way to the rest of the ship clear. Although you don't know exactly what the cultists who have taken control of the ship are up to, you are certain that they must be stopped. Put each set-aside location except lifeboat into play. Attach a random copy of Crate of Goods to Deck Lounge and theater, passenger cabins, and sun deck. We're going to go ahead and do that. Advance the agenda deck to agenda 2A. Remove all doom from play. So I've gone ahead and set up everything it tells us to, and I've used the suggestion on the back of the card here during our setup. It has on the back where we think we should put things. So I've got them where they tell me I should put them. I put our creative goods in the passenger cabins, deck, lounge, and theater, and in the sun deck. Now this is of course a big panned out version. When we, as we start playing and moving through here, of course, I'll go back in closer to where our investigators are because that's how I like to play. We've also gonna go ahead now and advance our agenda deck to agenda 2A. So in accordance with our act card, we're gonna advance our agenda to 2A. It says, search the ship. The cultists rush through the ship in a frenzy, ransacking everything in sight. Clearly, they are searching for something, and whatever it is must be extremely valued to them. Forced, at the end of the enemy phase, place one doom on each crate of goods for each ready cultist enemy at its location. Remove all doom from the crate of goods when it is flipped. With this complete, we're gonna move into our next act, 2A. It says, find it first. From eavesdropping the, on the cultists, you hear one name repeated over and over, La Grasse. The cultists seem to be searching for a certain item that a person named La Grasse is transporting. You must search through the cargo marked with his name to find it first. The objective, when you take control of Tablet of the Dragon, 
advance. All right, that's going to be our mission. Let's go ahead and take care of it. Moving into Jacqueline's turn, we're going to go ahead and play out some of our cards. Pretty much is pretty much all we're going to do here. I'm going to pay three to put out our Robes of Endless Night, which allows me to make my spells cost one less. And we're going to use it right away to go ahead and play out our Infallible Truth. This will help us evade enemies since I don't have the attack one. There's another one that is used for attacking. This one's used for evading. We're at least going to get one of them out to try to protect ourselves. Now, of course, both of these are going to cost a total of six, but that's not going to be the case because our robes are in effect. So we're going to go ahead and use our five resources to do that. I'm then going to go ahead and place our four charges on our spell and we're going to be set to use that. Now of course we have one more action left and we're going to play one more card. We're actually going to go ahead and play our Voice of Ra. It's a spell, gain one resource, reveal three random tokens from the chaos bag. For each one of these symbols revealed, gain an additional two resources. So we're going to play this and draw three random tokens. And at this time, I'm going to use her ability as well. When an investigator at your location reveal any number of chaos tokens, reveal two additional tokens. Of the revealed tokens, choose two cancel two non fail tokens or one fail token so we're going to go ahead and actually draw the three from here and then we're going to reveal two additional we're going to draw two and then reveal two additional so we're actually going to be drawing up five total tokens so we're going to go ahead reach into our bag and see what we get we mix it up a little bit and we got we can draw five tokens we got one two three and let's see what else we get we get four and five those are our five tokens we were able to reveal two cards or two of these tokens, I can cancel two of these tokens. So I'm gonna go ahead and cancel the Elder Sign because that's not one of the symbols on this card. And I'm also gonna cancel the plus one. So those are the three tokens we revealed from the bag. Her power is actually gonna fire off again here. It says, if this effect is canceled or ignored, I get to draw a card. I chose to ignore and cancel the Elder Sign effect, so I actually get to draw another card. Let's see what we have found. We have found Dark Prophecy. It's an augury. Fast. Play when you would reveal a chaos token. Reveal five chaos tokens instead of one. Choose one of the chosen to those tokens with any of these symbols on them to resolve and ignore the rest. If no such token is revealed, choose any one of those tokens to reveal to resolve and ignore the rest. The secrets are written in the stars. All right, so that's going to go into our hand. We're going to go ahead and gain one resource and reveal three tokens and gain an additional two for each symbol revealed. I'm going to gain back five resources. Wow, that's a really cool power to be able to work with that card. I'm a big fan of that. So we're going to gain back our five resources, which is ridiculous, and we're going to go ahead and move into the enemy turn. Since there are no enemies to activate, we're going to go right back into our upkeep phase. Both of our characters are going to go ahead and gain one resource. She's up to six. He has one. And now we also get to go ahead and draw a card for Jacqueline. We have found Astral Travel spell. Move to any revealed location at and reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If you reveal any of those symbols, you must discard an item or ally asset you control. If you cannot, you take one damage. Extra dimensional travel had its risks. He knew, but who could resist the frontiers beyond time and space? All right, we're going to add that to our hand. I don't know if we're going to use this, but at least I can use these symbols if I want to. It seems like a pretty big risk to do something like that. Now, of course, Cho also gets a card. He has found one, two punch. Spirit Tactics. Fight. You gain plus one for this attack. If you succeed, you may fight that enemy again and get plus two and deal one damage for that attack. Nathaniel is renowned for his rapid left jab and right cross signature move. All right, way to go. We're going to put that in our hand and move into the Mythos phase. The first thing we have to do for our Mythos phase is place Doom on the agenda. Then we have to draw a card for each of our investigators. We're going to start with Nathaniel. He's our lead investigator. He has found a Sea Singer. He is a 422 humanoid cultist, aloof and seal, plus one or elder sign. All right. While Sea Singer has a sealed token, that token is treated as if it were doom for the purpose of checking the doom threshold. Strange chanting like crashing of waves emerge from the hooded figure. And he has one attack and two sanity. There it is. Oh my gosh, it looks pretty awesome. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this in our location, but it is a loop, so it is not actually going to engage Cho. We also have to draw a card for Jacqueline. She has found Clap of Thunder, Omen, Revelation, Test 3, Willpower. If you fail, you must choose one of these skills. Discard each card with at least one matching skill icon from your hand. Oh, that's terrible. All right, we're going to have to draw from our bag and see what happens. 
Before we do our test, we do have to go ahead and seal either a plus one or our elder sign token. I'm gonna to choose to seal our plus one onto our sea singer. Then we're gonna go ahead and draw into our token bag and see what happens. Now she has a willpower of five, so we're testing on a three. Let's see how this goes. We have found a negative two, so we are just fine. We have successfully survived our clap of thunder. And that is gonna be the end of the mythos phase. We're gonna move into our investigator's turn. Now we need to get to our crate of goods, which are located here, here, and here. And the way this map works is it kind of moves on down the line like this in a way. From this location, we can go to either one of these locations. From this location, you can go here or you can go up to here. And then from here, it's just a straight shot right across these other locations. And then from here, it goes up and then over. Now, of course, this location also does connect to the deck and lounge theater. So there are some ways to get around this map, but mostly you're kind of moving in that direction. So we need to try to get over here so we can get up into this area to get to that passenger cabin so we can take on those crate of goods. Starting again with Cho, I think our best bet is to try to get our plus one token back. I think that's going to be our best bet. So we're going to go ahead and engage this enemy. Since it's aloof, I have to engage it. Now, this is not only taking our plus one away, it is also considered a doom right now. So we're going to go ahead and see what we can do. We're going to go ahead and do a fight test. He has a five fight, plus he has the plus one from his ally. So he has a six versus a four. We're going to see if we're able to take this character out. That's going to be our plan. So for our second action, we're going to go ahead and just hit it and see what we get. We have got a minus one. So we did do one damage to this creature. It's gonna go ahead and take one health. Now it only has two, so we only have to do one more attack to get it done. Now when we're gonna go ahead and go into our second test, I think at this point, now we know that we can probably take this guy out. I'm gonna use Jacqueline's ability. It says when an investigator at your location will reveal any number of chaos tokens, reveal two additional tokens, of the revealed tokens, choose and cancel two, unless it's a miss. So we're gonna go ahead and do that. She's gonna use her ability. He's gonna go ahead and draw three tokens and cancel two of them. He's gonna take these three right here. One, two, and three. Oh, I think he's gonna take the elder sign. I think that's his best bet. So we're gonna go ahead and use his elder sign to go ahead and do our second point of damage, killing the sea singer and getting back our plus one token. We're gonna to discard that, put this back in our pile, and then we're gonna reveal our elder sign ability that Cho has. His ability does state that when the elder sign takes effect, he gets plus one, and not only that, if this skill is successful during an attack, return an event from your discard pile to your hand. That's awesome. And I think there's only one event in his discard pile we really even want, and that's his Monster Slayer. I'm gonna go ahead and take this back into my hand. That's amazing, that's an awesome power. At the end of this turn here, we're gonna go ahead and exhaust him, but I'm also gonna take one more wound and put this on Gerda because I really wanna gain this other clue in here. Remember, her card states that if we take out a monster, she can take a damage to gain one clue at the location. So we've got both our clues. Now that is gonna exhaust Cho, he's gonna be done. We're gonna go ahead and move into Jacqueline's turn. The first thing she's gonna do is go ahead and spend one of her resources to play our ritual candles. I'm a big fan of these, especially in this scenario because a lot of the stuff that takes place on our card has to do with if you succeed, do this, or if you succeed, draw this. So this will be able to, if I can still use these tokens and gain the plus one from the ritual candles, because it states down here, after one of these symbols is revealed during a test you're performing, you get plus one skill value for that test. The wax tapers off giving off an eerie glow and the flames move as if they are alive. So we're going to go ahead and put that in our area and we're going to go into our second action. At this point, I think it's best to start moving. I know I could go ahead and use this room here to find some items, but I don't know how many she actually has in her deck. There, she's a mystic, so I'm guessing not too many. Of course, there probably are some. Also, I do want to mention that at the end of this game, I will go through some of the cards that we didn't see when we were playing to kind of show you what else is inside this investigator deck. I want to do that at the end, though, so we can continue playing, and those that want to see can then see it at the end. We're going to move with Jacqueline over to here, and we're going to move into the engine room. And it states, the engine room should normally be a noisy place, but it is eerily quiet. The cult is perhaps interested in keeping the ship at precisely this location. So let's go ahead and flip over our card and find out what has happened in the engine room. Well, look at that, there's a shroud of four. If there are no clues on the revealed side of the boiler room, engine room gains. If there are no clues on the engine room, discard cards from your hand with a total of at least one book icon, one fist, one agility, and seal the negative six. Add a heart token to the chaos bag for the remainder of the scenario. Remember that you have restarted the engine. 
So we're going to put two clues in this location and totally forget about the engine room. It's going to shroud a four. <laughs> There's no way I'm going to be able to do either here. But you know what? I am going to use my next movement to move over to the boiler room. So moving Jacqueline over to the boiler room is going to be her final action and it's going to exhaust her. Let's go ahead and see what the boiler room says. It says, you can feel the heat wafting from this room. Your knowledge of the ships tells you that this is where the steam needed to power the constellation is generated. Let's go ahead and reveal our card and see what it is. A shroud of three. I'm never going to find any of these clues. We got a shroud of three forced. After the end of your turn at the boiler room, put the top card of your deck face down into your threat area. Treat this card as an exhaustion, treachery. With the following text, you get negative one fight, agility, and health forced. After you leave the boiler room, discard this card. Fantastic. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of more clue tokens we're probably never going to get right here on this card. And we're going to move into our end of turn, which means I am going to have to do this to Jacqueline. So we're going to take the top card and put it in our threat area. I'm just going to place it right up there. We get to discard this card if we actually get out of the boiler room. Since there are no enemies on the board, we're going to go ahead and get our characters back to get life here. They're going to go ahead and unexhaust, and we're going to go ahead, gain a resource, and draw a card. Nathaniel's going to go ahead first. He's going to grab one of his resources and his new card. Let's see what he has found. He has found Randall Cho. It says his character, this is his ally. It says Nathaniel Cho's deck only. It's an ally and a medic. After Randall Cho enters play, heal three damage or search your deck or discard pile for a weapon asset. Play it, paying its cost, you shuffle your deck. You got to give this up, Nathaniel. Sooner or later, you're going to get yourself killed. Oh, that's too bad. All right, Nathaniel Cho is our character. That's awesome. Now, I do have two clues. Something tells me maybe you shouldn't have used her for those clues at that location because they were used for that guy. But, you know, we have some extra clues. Maybe at some point I can dump them on something. We'll see how it goes. Next, we have Jacqueline. She's going to go ahead and gain a resource. She's going to draw a card and see what she gets. She has found Clairvoyance. It has three charges to spell. Spend one charge. Investigate. Investigate using willpower instead of investigation. If you succeed, discover one additional clue at this location. If any Elder Sign plus one or zero token is revealed during the investigation, take one horror. This is perfect. This is exactly what we needed. Wow, talk about a top deck draw. That was great. Finishing the upgrade step, we're going to move into the Mythos phase. I'm going to go ahead and put a Doom on our agenda. Of course, 12 will advance the agenda. We're going to go ahead and draw two cards. One is going to be for Nathaniel Cho. Let's see what he has received. He has got the Order Enforcer again. He is going to prey on most clues. Now, this guy is not aloof. He is not going to hide from me. He is a hunter with Retaliate. And once Order Enforcer attacks you, discard a non-story item asset. You control to reduce the damage by one. So I'm going to have to go ahead and put this engaged with Nathaniel Cho. That is terrible. But we hopefully can take him out in one hit. We'll see how it goes. Our next card is going to be for Jacqueline. Let's see what she has found. She has found the Cultist of the Deep. Where it's a humanoid cultist. It has three across the board and spawns nearest location with an attached crate of goods. Any empty deck location instead if there are no crate of goods in play. While Cultus of the Deep is at a location, treat that location as exhausted for all encounter card effects. Dark blue robes mark these servants from some unnamed entity of the deep. And there they are. They're right down there. The servants of the deep. Oh, there they are. Are the cultists. All right. We're going to go ahead and put this in. Where is it? Attached to a crate of good. Nearest location. All right. So the nearest location with a crate of goods is going to be right here. So we're going to go ahead and spawn him right there. Now he's not a hunter. He's just going to stay right there. We're going to have to defeat him in order to probably search for those crate of goods. We're going to go ahead and start with Jacqueline this turn. Now I have to tell you, I was really, really worried that that card right there was actually our clairvoyance card, but we got lucky it was not. So I'm going to go ahead and play out our clairvoyance card. And I'm going to use, of course, our robes of the Eldless Knight, because that way I can pay one less for this spell. It has four, three charges, so we're going to go ahead and put the three charges right there, and we're going to pay our three resources, just like that. For Jacqueline's second action, I'm going to go ahead and spend one of the charges off my clairvoyance to go ahead and use my willpower to find out what's in the boiler room. We're going to try to get these clue tokens. Now, we're going to go ahead and use her ability as well to go ahead and grab three tokens out of this thing and see what happens to her. We're going to grab one, two, and three, and let's see what we have found. We have found a negative one. We have found a heart-like token and we have found a skull. Now I am able to cancel two of these. Let's go ahead and look at our card here because there might be one I might not want to cancel like this heart. Negative three if you succeed either draw 
two cards or gain two resources. So if I chose to discard these two back in the bag, I would be drawing this card. I would lose by three. I have a five, which means I would be at only two. I would not succeed, but I could go ahead and use this. After the test, after one of these symbols is revealed during a test you are performing, you get plus one skill value for the test and the symbol is right there. So as far as I understand it, I can use this to go ahead and gain plus one to the skill value for the test, meaning I'm up to three, which means I do succeed. And since it's this one, I'm able to draw two cards or gain two resources. I think we're gonna go ahead and decide down that. Since she has three resources, we're gonna go ahead and grab a couple cards. Let's see what we have found. We have found, oh no, we found her basic weakness. Madness, put nihilism into play in your threat area. After you reveal, can cancel or ignore a fail token, take one damage and one di horror, discard nihilism. All right, oh, we've got another parallel fates. So I think we've seen this card before. Uh, look at the top four cards of the encounter deck. Reveal a random token from the chaos bag. If it has any of those symbols, shuffle those cards back into the encounter deck. Otherwise, return them to the top in any order. All right, we're going to go ahead and have to put this into my, was it play area? Barf. All right, we're going to go put this out there. Now, since we succeeded using clairvoyance, we actually get two of the clue tokens. We get to gain an extra clue token. So we have one more clue token than we're supposed to because we got through the boiler room. Now we're gonna use our third action and that's just gonna be to move right back over here and we're gonna exhaust her in the engine room. Once I leave the boiler room, I am gonna go ahead and discard this card that we had put up there because of our boiler room. After you leave the boiler room, discard this card. What did we have to discard? At least I get to know what it is. Inflatable. Okay, well that's okay because we already have one of these in play. So it's not the end of the world. All right, that's the end of Jacqueline. Let's go ahead and move into Nathaniel's turn. Moving to Nathaniel's turn, we're going to go ahead and have to deal with an Order Enforcer yet again. Apparently, he came down to check to see what's going on in the cargo room, found another Order Enforcer on the ground, and while Joe was standing over him, so Joe decided let's go for him as well. We're going to hit him with our Monster Slayer card. I'm going to use a Fight skill, and this attack deals plus one damage. I also get the bonus of a Wild up here. I think I forgot that when I did my original fight against the first Order Enforcer. So we're going to go ahead, reach into our token bag, and see what we pull out. We have decided to pull out hopefully something really good. Evil Day Bag of Death, negative four. Okay, we have to do some math to see if we actually pass this test. Since I'm super math, we did pass the test. We have five for Nathaniel Cho, just straight up. Now he also gets plus one because of his ally, so he's at six. Then he gets plus one because of this cards event thing up here. So that's seven. Seven minus four is three, which is equal to his fight skill. I did one damage for the actual attack, plus one for this, and actually a plus one for Nathaniel if I wanted to exhaust his card, but I don't want to use that. I can only use it once per turn. I don't know who else I'm going to fight, but I have no reason to use it. We have defeated the Order Enforcer. We're going to go ahead and discard this card. We have done one action. I'm also going to discard this, and we are on to our second action. I believe our second action, we're going to move over to the engine room where she is as well, and we're going to see what we can do over there. Nathaniel has some pretty hefty priced cards. So I think our third action is going to be just to gain a resource. And that's going to be the end of his turn. We're going to exhaust him and move into the enemy turn. The only enemy on the board this turn is our Cultist of the Deep. And he's not actually going to move. He doesn't have the Hunter keyword. So he's not going to move at us. We're just going to go ahead and unexhaust our two characters and move into the recovery phase. Or others may call it the upkeep phase. We're going to go ahead and gain a resource, draw a card, and see what we have found. We have found, oh, his boxing gloves. This is what I've been waiting for. This is his signature item here, which is pretty awesome. It says, item weapon. You get plus one fight while fighting. So, oh man, he's going to be at seven just straight up. I can use these that after you defeat an enemy, exhaust the boxing gloves, search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event, and add it to your hand, shuffle your deck. Oh, it's going to be awesome. I'm going to put this in my hand, and you bet I'm going to be playing that next turn. Jacqueline is also going to gain a resource and a card. Let's see what she has found. She has found... Azure Flame. It's a spell. Spend one charge. Fight. This attack uses willpower instead of fist. Deal one damage. If it's a star or an elder sign, plus one or zero, I take one damage. Alright, we're going to put this in our hand. Now, I don't believe you can have more than two spells out at a time, so we have our two spells. We might just have to hold that for another time. Moving into the Mythos phase, I'm going to go ahead and add a Doom to the agenda and draw a card. We're going to see what we have gotten for Cho. He found, what's this? Thalassophobia. It's a terror, revelation, test two willpower. This test gets plus two difficulty if the location is exhausted for each point you fail by. Take a horror. Oh, that's terrible. All right, we're gonna have to see what we can do about that. 
So Cho has three willpower, and I need to get a two or better. This place is not exhausted. I don't think I'm very confident at this. I'm actually going to use Jacqueline's ability for him since they're in the same location. Of course, that means I don't get to use it on her turn when she draws something from this bag. So we'll see what happens. I'm drawing three tokens, and we get to put a couple of these back. Let's see which ones we got. We've got a minus one, a minus four, and a skull. Well, take a wild guess which one we're going to keep. You got it. We're going to keep the minus one token. Therefore, we have passed the test. We don't have to worry about it. We're going to discard the card. Moving into Jacqueline's phase. Now, this could be bad because if she can't use her ability for herself, she has found sealed doors. Revelation. Attached to your location. While well, sealed doors is attached to a location, you cannot enter or leave that location except by scenario card effects. I can test for strength. If you succeed, discard the sealed door. You may take two damage to automatically succeed. Investigators at a connecting location may trigger this ability. All right, not too bad, especially with Cho standing there. We're going to move into our investigator phase, and we're going to start with Jacqueline first. She's going to spend one of the charges from her clairvoyance card to, again, try to find these clues. We're going to go ahead and reach into the bag. Now, I can't use her power because I used it during our mythos phase. So we're going to go ahead and just reach in, grab one, see what we got. We got a skull. So let's go ahead and read our skull card. Our skull card does state negative two instead negative four if you're in an exhausted location. Now, of course, her, book, her skill is only a five, right? Yes, her book willpower is only five, which is what our clairvoyance card does. So five minus two is three. She has failed. But again, thanks to our wonderful candle here. Oh my gosh, she's going to be the, can the ritual candles of glory is what these are. After you reveal these symbols during a test you are performing, you get plus one to that skill value. Oh my gosh, so I got plus one again, which saved us. We were able to now find both these clues because of our clairvoyance card. Oh my goodness, that those candles are amazing. We're gonna go ahead and put this back into our bag, grab our clues, and that was our first action. For our second action, we're gonna go ahead and get rid of our nihilism here. I'm just gonna use the two and go ahead and discard it. I actually should have done that first because who knows if I would have drawn a bad thing from the bag, I would have taken damage. But we're gonna discard this and we're gonna go ahead now and exhaust her card. It's going to be Cho's turn and we're gonna see what he can do. The first thing Nathaniel's going to do is go ahead and play his boxing gloves. He's going to pay the three resources to put them down because they're awesome. And that's going to be his first action. His second action, I think we're going to try to move. Before we can move, though, we have to take out this sealed door. So he's going to go ahead and test his fight skill to see if he's able to bust through that door. We're going to mix up our magical bag of doom and gloom here. And we got, oh, we got our elder sign, the magical bag of awesome and super bunny happiness. All right, we've gotten plus one, and I can take a skill card from our discard pile and put it back in our hand. Oh, my gosh, this card is just it's the reoccurring nightmare right there for the monsters. It's our monster slayer card. We're going to take this into our hand. That's awesome. We're now going to go ahead and discard this event. That's his first action was to fight off that door. He totally took out that door. Now what he's going to do is he's going to move to the dining room. Let's see what the dining room says. The dining room is a huge space devoted to luxurious consumption. Tables are covered in half-eaten meals of the sumptuous variety, while the gilded walls reflect the light from hanging chandeliers. Let's go ahead and see what is in here. It says, action. Spend one clue, evade. Evade an enemy at this location or connecting location. Group limit once per game. I can only do it once per game. It'd be easy to lose someone in a room this big. Now, of course, there are two clues there, and there also is a shroud value of two. So this might not be a bad place to try to gain some clues if we ever need to. That is Cho's third action. He's going to go ahead and exhaust. Now, we only have, again, one enemy on the board, and he is just going to stay right there, which means we move into the upkeep phase, and we're going to go ahead and unexhaust our two investigators, gain a resource, and draw a card. Cho is first. He's going to go ahead and gain one resource and draw a card. He has found Relentless. It says Talent. When you deal excess damage to an enemy, exhaust Relentless. Place that excess damage on Relentless. Then I can for free discard Relentless. Gain resources equal to the amount of damage on it. Oh, that's going to be awesome. All right, we got to go smash that guy real good so I can get a lot of resources on this card. Jacqueline is also going to gain a resource and draw a card. She has gotten the Crystal Pendulum. It says I can. you get plus one willpower. And I can also, after a skill test at your location, begin exhaust crystal pendulum. Name a number of 
if that test succeeds by the number or fails by the number, draw a card. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be really good. All right, now I do, I can only put one of these out. This is a charm, it goes on the necklace. Now I am assuming that a lot of people have played Arkham before. I'm not really going through a lot of the rules as to all the different things that happen. Of course, you are only allowed one piece of equipment on your body, you are two in your hands or one two-handed item. And of course, only one necklace. I also, you can only have two arcanes out at a time and I do have arcanes, so I can't actually put that other spell out at this point. But I just want to make sure that you understand that a lot of this I'm playing on the assumption that people know how to play this game. We're looking for some great playthrough videos of this. Winstop Co-op Shop has done some great ones and there are so many others out there as well. So please go ahead and check them out. I've also done a one shot that may explain the rules a little bit more than I am during this one. We're going to move into the mythos phase. Go ahead and place a doom on the location and Cho is going to draw a card. He has found, oh, the same thing again. Oh no. Now, sadly, I don't have Jacqueline at the location, so I can't use her ability. He has only a three willpower, so we're going to see how this goes. He's going to go ahead and use this thing. Now, I do have a willpower card I could use, but I'm choosing not to because it actually can prevent horror hits. We got negative six. Oh, that's terrible. All right, so we got, well, zero, and we're going to go ahead and read our card here. It's going to be bad news. You're going to, for each point you fail by, take one. So I'm going to take two horror damage on him. So he's gonna go ahead and take two horror. Now, good news, bad news, he didn't actually commit that card, so we didn't lose it. Bad news is he took two horror, and he only has six to begin with, so he's down to four. We're gonna go ahead and discard this evil card, I never wanna see it again. And we're gonna see what we find for Jacqueline. She has found the Cultist of the Deep again. Oh no, there's two Cultists of the Deep up next to these crates. Oh man, this is amazing. So these cultists must be protecting the, I don't know, incredible weapon here. If I open that and there's nothing in it, that's going to be absolutely hilarious. Okay, they've got both these guys guarding this crate. So for our first turn, I'm going to use Cho, and he's going to move over here. And when he walks into this room, he's going to engage both of these cultists of the deep. Of course, we do have to see what happens at the passenger car. It says, a long hallway stretches as far as your eye can see with countless doors on each side, leading to rooms for the various passengers. Here's our passenger car. That's awesome. We're going to go ahead and flip it over. It's the same picture. It says down here, forced. When the passenger car is revealed, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and spawn it here. That enemy gains after the enemy is defeated. You have freed passengers from their guards. Seal negative four. On passenger cabins, add one of these tokens to the chaos bag for the remainder of the scenario. A cultist stalks the halls, keeping the passengers locked tight. All right, we're going to go look for a cultist. Oh, that's awesome. So now i got three got to deal with. So our first card here is not a cultist. Our second card is not a cultist. Our third card is not a cultist. Our fourth card is a cultist. It's another one of the cultists of the deep. Well, well you know, it's going to spawn right here. That's awesome. He's a cultist. These ones you can discard it, and I'm going to go ahead and put this one back on there. Didn't need that one. Now I've got three cultists of the deep on show. Let's see what we can do. For our second action, Cho is going to go ahead and use his Monster Slayer because it's a monstrous card. I love this card. We're going to go ahead and use a fight. We're going to attack. It's going to deal plus one. We're going to go ahead and reach into our Chaos Bag and see what we have found. Hopefully we did not find something too but tragic for our that will befall our friend. He has found a skull, which is going to be negative two. And you know what? That's just fine because our good friend Cho here has five plus two from one from the ally and one from his boxing glove. So he has seven minus two is five. He has totally destroyed this cultist of the deep. He has done three damage. How did I do three damage? I did one from this card. I also have one from the actual attack. And then of course, Cho himself is going to activate this ability. And since this was an event card, I am able to do plus one damage. So this cultist has died. We've gone ahead and killed him. I am then able to activate my boxing gloves. After you defeat an enemy, exhaust boxing gloves, search the top six cards of your deck for a spirit event and add it to your hand and shuffle the deck. So we're going to look at our top six cards. One, two, three, four, five, six, and see what we have found. We have found not a... We're looking for a spirit down here. Nope. We got spirit one, two, punch, dodge, and spirit counter punch. So I could choose or I could get over here. What's this one? Choose a non-elite enemy at your location or connecting location. Move that enemy to your location, engage and attack it. Mm, I don't think that's going to be the happening here. Engage and fight. Choose a non-elite enemy to at your location. Well, he's already engaged with me. All right. And of course, this is not, this is our physical training. We could go ahead and use these resources or spend resources to gain these pluses to these benefits. What's this one? This one says, after another investigator moves from your location to a connecting location, exhaust safeguard, move to that location. 
One, two, punch. I think this is the one we're going to take. Fight. You get plus one for the attack. If you succeed, you may fight that enemy again. Your attack gets plus two and deals plus one damage. We're totally taking another one, two, punch. Of course, that does cost two, where counter punch costs none, but that's okay. This is a really good card. We're going to take one, two, punch into our hand and shuffle these back into our deck. Now, we still have two more cultists. I'm going to go ahead and play my one, two, punch at this point by paying my two resources. Now, if we have to actually get attacked by them, I'm going to hit for one horror and one health, and that's okay because I can actually put the horror over here instead of taking it. But, of course, he can take a ton of damage. So our one-two punch is going to allow us to draw onto our bag here. Wow, Joe is such an awesome boxer. Let's see what we got. We got negative one. So that allows us to do one damage to our cultist. We're going to go in for our second one-two punch and see how we do. This one is going to be for, come on, we're going to do this for George Foreman. Let's see how we do. Oh, we got a zero. All right, that's fantastic. So I did three damage total. This enemy is destroyed. We've gone ahead and killed him, too. We were able to kill two of those cultists. Now, of course, sadly, I didn't know this third one was going to be here, which is too bad. Now we're going to have to exhaust Cho. That was his third action. I don't know about you, but I'd be pretty exhausted, too. He came running in here and actually took out two guys with all his punches. Boom, boom, boom. Oh, I'd be pretty exhausted. But, of course, he's probably going to get hit by this guy. I don't have much I can do about it. Meanwhile, down in the engine room, Jacqueline is going to go ahead and use her action here. If there are no clues on the engine room, discard cards from your hand with a total of at least one book, one fight, and one agility. Let's go ahead and do that. We're going to find those symbols. So we're going to go ahead and discard these three cards. I'm going to use this for a fight. That's going to be used for a intellect. And I'm going to go ahead and use this for our agility. We're going to get rid of all three of these cards. I know it's a costly thing to do, but now I get to seal the negative one token and put in a heart token. So good news, we were able to seal a negative six. Bad news is we're putting in a negative four, pretty much is what that is. We're going to go ahead and put that in there. We've done our first action, which was going ahead and turning on the engines. We've restarted them. With our next two actions, I believe all we're going to do is just move here and then move here. We're going to go hang out with Cho in the passenger cabins because, well, I think it's safer to be next to that boxer who's taking everything out than being by myself. We're going to move into our enemy phase, and that's okay. I'm going to take a damage, and I'm going to take one horror, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and play this counterpunch fast. Play after an enemy attacks you, even if that attack was canceled. Fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy, so we're going to go ahead and hit him. Even though he hit me, I'm going to hit him back. Why not? He's, this boxer's awesome. I'm going to go ahead and see how we do. We got about a billion and a half fight, and we got negative one. So we were able to do one wound to this cultist of the deep. Now, of course, it didn't kill it, but we did do one. And sadly, I can't activate a lot of my stuff because I already activated its turn while fighting off all those other cultists. So we're going to discard this and go ahead and take our damage. So discarding our counter punch, we're going to put it there. We're going to go ahead and, of course, like I said before, put our sanity hit or our horror hit right there. And we're going to take one damage ourselves, which is totally fine. Now, sadly, he has no resources. It would be nice to be able to try to get out our ally so that we could actually maybe heal up some of our damage as we get more hurt. With the enemy phase done, we're going to go ahead and go to the upkeep phase. We're going to go ahead and unexhaust Cho. Forgot to exhaust her, but that's okay. She's ready to go as well. We're going to draw a card and gain a resource. We're going to go ahead and gain one resource for Cho and draw his card. He has found glory. Fast. Play after you defeat an enemy. Draw two cards. Oh, wow. That's awesome. All right. His cards are all awesome. I like every one of them. All right. We're going to go ahead and see what Jacqueline finds on her turn. She gains another resource. She's got six resources, a lot of resources. And let's see what she has found. She has found another Defiance card. All right, we're going to go put this with our rest of our cards, and we're going to move into our Investigator's turn. But, of course, we can't forget our Mythos phase. This is my favorite part. Let's see what Cho has found. He has found Ocean's Maw. Hex, test three willpower. If you fail, take one damage. Then attach an ally asset you control to open water. You lose control of this asset. The ally gains action. Take control of this card if you were are at open water. Any investigator may trigger this ability if you have no ally assets. Op move to open water instead. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. Oh wow, I'm glad that Jacqueline didn't draw this because she doesn't have any allies. And let me tell you, Cho has that one ally. She's pretty banged up and can't take any more damage. So if I lose her, it's not the end of the world. We're going to go ahead and draw our token. I'm not going to actually help him on this. If I lose her, it's not the end of the world. Like I said, it could have soaked up one more damage, but that's okay. Oh, we got the Elder Sign. That's plus one. Oh, and you know what we get? You know what we get? We get the Monster Slayer 
death card. Oh, this card's awesome, and I keep getting it back. I'm going to put this into my hand, and we succeeded at that one. Wow. So I don't have to worry about our ally falling into the water. Now, of course, we have to draw one for Jacqueline. Let's see if she can get that lucky. Oh, she's not that lucky. She draw the same thing. Now, she has a lot of willpower. Test three, and right now she has five. Now, her going into the ocean would be absolutely just devastating. So she's going to use her power to go ahead and draw three tokens out of the bag. Let's see what she finds. She's going to draw this one, this one, and this one. And she gets to discard some of these. She gets to discard, oh, pretty much all of them that aren't any good. I think I'm going to keep the zero. This negative two doesn't help me because it doesn't give me extra bonuses, or I'd go ahead and keep that one. So we're going to put these two back, hold on to the zero, and we have survived the ocean mob. Wow, that's a devastating card. We're going to go ahead and start with Cho. Cho's going to go ahead and take out this cultist. He's just going to go ahead and punch him with his boxing gloves and see how this goes. We only need to do, we need to do two damage. We're going to do one here. Actually, yes, here we go. Negative five. Wow, that's terrible. Five minus five plus one, two. I mean, it's not enough. He didn't hit him. Oh, no. All right, I think what we're going to do now is we're actually going to go ahead and play our Monster Slayer card here. I was actually planning to hold on to this one, but I think it'd be best to play it now. Hmm. You know, no, I lied. We're going to go ahead and punch him again by himself. We're going to draw one token and see what we get. We have got the negative three. That is a wound. We're going to go ahead and hit him for one damage. That's fantastic. Now I want to play my Monster Slayer card. The reason I am is because then I can do overkill on him, and I can put some of that onto my Relentless. So we're going to use our Monster Slayer card to gain plus one damage against this monster. Let's see what we drew. We have drawn a negative one. That's totally fine. That's enough to kill him. So I did three damage to him due to the fact that I can use Nathaniel Cho's ability as well. So that's one damage, two damage for the actual attack, three damage for what he can do. So now that we've gone ahead and done that, that's two more than he was. We're going to go ahead and discard this guy. And of course, we have to exhaust Nathaniel Cho. He's done. Oh, that was only, yeah, he missed, hit, and then he hit again. So he is done. That's his exhaustion. I'm going to discard this card. And we're going to go ahead and gain some of those in Relentless tokens. Now, we overkilled him by two, so I'm going to go ahead and put two Relentless tokens on here. Also, I was able to kill him, so I can go ahead and, after you defeat an enemy, exhaust the Boxing Gloves. Look at the top six cards. We're going to go ahead and exhaust that. One, two, three, four, five, six. Let's see what we found. Three. That's six. Yes, that's six. All right, we have found another Counter Punch, a Talent. Oh, Monster Slayer card. Get over here. Oh, I think we're taking Monster Slayer. There's no doubt about it. We're going to take the Monster Slayer card, and we're going to hold on to that one because that's pretty much the greatest card ever. We're going to put these back into the deck. We're going to shuffle it up, and we're going to move over to Jacqueline's turn because <laughs> Nathaniel Cho is completely done. But that's okay. Oh, you know what? I don't think I'm done yet. Look what else I've got. I've got this one. Glory fast. Play after you defeat an enemy. Draw two cards. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I've got one resource. We're going to pay that resource to draw two cards. And let's see what we have found. We found Vicious Blow and Dodge. Oh, if things couldn't get any better, they just keep on. Oh, this guy just keeps on getting better. Now, I have a total of six cards, and the max I can hold is seven. So we're getting close to the max, but that's okay. I have yet to draw something that I can't use for this guy. This guy is awesome. Now that we've defeated all the creatures, I believe our passenger cabin is going to fire off here. It says, after this enemy is defeated, you have freed passengers from their guards. Seal negative four and add one of those to the token pillow. All right, so we're going to seal our negative four and add one of those tokens. So this negative four is sealed in the passenger cabins, and we are going to add this token to there. And now that's a negative two token. So again, we got rid of a negative six and added a negative four. Now we've gotten rid of a negative four and added a negative two. So our bag's getting a little bit better. Of course, it's never going to be awesome because, well, that's Arkham Horror for you. Now I want to go ahead and check out the crate of goods. That is what Jacqueline's going to do this turn. I have to test intellect. and Or I could test my agility, but that's worse than my intellect, so I might as well do intellect. And to sift through the contents of the crate, if you succeed in investigation, investigator at your location may place one of his or her clues on the crate of goods. Then, if there are clues equal to the number of investigators, I can flip the card and draw it, and hopefully it is going to be the incredible weapon. We're going to go ahead first and play Defiance, not as the card, but I'm going to use the, question, the wild symbol up here to gain plus one to this draw. And we're going to see how we do, because this is going to be kind of tough, because I'm only at plus one on this draw. So we're going to go ahead and draw our token. Oh, we found the skull. Okay, that's good and bad at the same time. The skull is negative two. So right now she has a four. Minus two is two. But of course, we do have those candles, and I'm going to go ahead and use the candles. 
after you receive one of these symbols, I can go ahead, if symbol is revealed during a test you're performing, you get plus one for the skill test. Fantastic, I got plus one, meaning this one was a success, meaning I could put one of her clues on there. And I'm gonna use hers because she has four and he only has three. That's her first action. Our second action is the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and try to go ahead and see if we can make this. This time, I'm going to go ahead, pay one resource to play Dark Prophecy. Fast, play when you would reveal a Chaos Token. Reveal five Chaos Tokens instead of one. Choose one of the tokens with one of these symbols to resolve and ignore the rest. So we're gonna go ahead and do that, pay my one cost. We're gonna go ahead, dig in our bag here, draw five tokens. All right, so we got one, two, three, four, and I can draw one more. Let's see what we get here. We got five, negative one. So actually, I think we failed. Let's see, let's see here, choose one of these tokens with one of these symbols. The only one that has a symbol is this one. I was really hoping to pick one of the ones with the negative two. Sadly, it didn't work for us. This is negative four. So four minus three is negative one, which is zero. So sadly, this card has failed us. We're gonna go ahead and discard it. I'm on my last attempt. I might as well give it a shot. I'm gonna go ahead and just test it straight up. I don't have anything else that's gonna help me. We're gonna test this straight up and see what we get. We're gonna dig in here, draw a token, and we have got a negative two. That's just enough to fail. So she is exhausted. We did not open our crate of goods. Sadly, that is how it goes. Moving into the upkeep phase, we're gonna go ahead and ready our characters. We're gonna gain a resource, and then Cho is gonna go ahead and draw his card. He has found, what is this? Oh, another relentless card. All right, we're gonna go ahead and add that to our hand. Jacqueline is also gonna gain a resource, and she's also gonna draw a card. Let's see what she has found. She found, oh, it looks like Clairvoyance. We're gonna add a Doom to our agenda, bring him to six, so we're only already halfway there. We're gonna go ahead and draw our first card for our characters. Cho is gonna go ahead and deal with Thunderclap. He's gonna to have to test his will three or discard some cards. Now I could use Jacqueline's ability, but we're just gonna go ahead and test this straight up. I'm at a straight up zero, so this I, I don't have good faith in this, but let's see what happens. We got, oh wow, a super fail. I'm glad I didn't use anybody's ability for this. We're gonna go ahead and choose intellect. There's only one card in his hand that actually has intellect, and that's gonna be Randall Cho, which is sad because this is a really good card, but we're gonna go ahead and discard that because it will then appease our thunder, clap of thunder. We're gonna go ahead and see what happens to Jacqueline here. She is gonna deal with seasickness. Hazard, put seasickness into your threat area first. After you move, the next skill test you perform this round gets plus one difficulty. At the end of your turn, test three willpower. If you succeed, discard seasickness. All right, sounds not too bad. Jacqueline's gonna go first, and she's gonna go ahead and pay her two resources to go ahead and put her crystal pendulum into play. And the reason I'm doing this is because why not? I've got a lot of resources and not a lot of cards, so this might be a way to help me get cards. And then we're gonna go ahead and go for our creative goods again. I'm gonna use her ability being able to draw three, car three tokens, and I'm gonna go ahead and use my crystal pendulum and call zero. Why not? We're gonna call zero and see what happens. We're gonna go one, two, and three. We have drawn Oh, a negative one, a negative one, and this heart. And I can discard two. I'm gonna discard these two, which puts me at negative one, which still is not enough to get this. Wow, this is out of control. I needed a test three. I got three. A negative one is two. Again, we're gonna go ahead and try it out. This is absolutely terrible. I need to get something. Come on, we need to get something. We need to get something. Let's get something good. Negative four. All right, one more time. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> this is absolutely ridiculous. So one thing these guys really have a problem with is going to test our intellect because I know Cho can't do it at all. Negative one. Oh, I missed again by one. That's absolutely terrible. So I've gone ahead and used all three actions for her. We're going to go into Cho's turn, and really, he's got to do the same thing. But before we go crazy, I think what we're going to do is we're going to use this relentless card and go ahead and put our act resources over here and discard it. We're then gonna go ahead and just play another Relentless. Why not? That's gonna be our second action. Our third action, we're gonna go ahead and play our Flesh Ward. I'm gonna put this out as well. It's gonna cost us three resources and we're complete with his turn. Sadly, we are still sitting at these crate of goods that we can't get open. Oh no. Well, we're gonna exhaust Cho and that was kind of a dead turn sadly for us. There's no enemies. We're gonna go ahead, unexhaust our characters, gain a resource and a card, hopefully one that gives us some books. Cho goes first, he's gonna gain a resource, and what card did he get? Something with books. Nope, we got Safeguard. This is the one that I'm allowed to move to another location, and exhaust Safeguard to move there. All right, we're gonna go ahead and gain that card. We're gonna go up and see what happens to Jacqueline. 
Well, before Jacqueline draws, I have to go ahead and test my sea sickness. I forgot to do that. It's, it says at the end of your turn, test three willpower. If you succeed, I get to discard sea sickness. I succeeded. I had a five willpower. This is discarded. We're going to go ahead and gain a resource. So we're up to five. We're going to draw a card and see what we get. We got, oh, another end, Robes of Endless Night that sadly does not have a book. I wish it did. Otherwise, I would be able to use it to try to help us get that last clue taken care of and open our crate. Well, I'll tell you right now, if there's any cultists watching this, they're laughing their, as we try to open those crates. All right, we're going to go ahead and see what happens to Cho. Cho has found a sea singer. Again, I have to lock my plus one or my <laughs> stars. The only thing that's going to help me. And I am going to have to deal with this. We're going to put this in his location, and he is aloof. Next, we're going to go ahead and see what Jacqueline gets. She has got lights out. It's a hazard. Revelation. Attach to your location. Limit one per location. Attached location gets plus two shroud. You cannot play assets with a cost lower than the shroud of this location while at this location. Forced. After attached location successfully investigated, discard lights out. Well, I think this place is going to be lights out for good because there's nothing else to gain there. So apparently the sea singer came in and turned out the lights. And he, she, he is aloof. I'm going to go ahead and put our characters over here so they can't actually be attached to them. And I'm going to gain my plus one token and put it on there. So we have to go ahead and kill this guy so I can get my token back. Now Cho has to do two damage to that creature and only has a four attack. He has five, six, seven. And I've got some cards here I could use to help finish this guy off even faster. And then I can go ahead and look for... Well, actually he only has a two intellect. So looking for the token probably isn't really going to help. So I think we're just going to go ahead and punch him. We're going to save our cards. So since our Sea Singer is aloof, we're going to go ahead and engage him with one action. Then we're going to go ahead and use our punching and see if we can get him. Come on, Cho, let's get this guy. Negative four, that misses. Oh, that's terrible. We're going to go ahead and try to punch him again. Let's see how this goes. Actually, no, now we're going to play a card because I have to do the extra damage or I'm not going to kill this guy. So we are going to go ahead and play. I think we're going to play our monster slayer card the one we keep on getting back we're going to go ahead and do one more damage if we're able to succeed so we're going to draw our token and see how this goes we got a negative two so that's enough we did two damage to the singer we're going to add our token back to the bag then we're going to go ahead discard this sea singer we're going to exhaust cho but we get to use our boxing gloves to look at the top six cards of our deck and see if we find any spirit cards we have found nope not a spirit card we have found, we've seen this one. We have seen, clean them out. What is this spirit? When this action begins, gain two resources. Next time we do a fight action, I get two resources. That's really good. Let's see here what else we got. Three more boxing gloves and a, nope, we're not going to be taking our weakness. That's no fun. Well, we're going to go ahead and take this into our hand. That sounds really awesome. Wow, what great cards he's got. We're going to go ahead and mix these back into our deck. And we're going to go on to Jacqueline's turn. And I guess the only thing she can really do is try to gain that clue, or put that clue onto our crate of goods. I'm telling you, this better be something awesome because this is taking us a lot of time to try to get through. Now, I can't play any assets because with this lights out card, it doesn't help us. I'll bump the camera. Let's see how we do. Again, I'm at a straight up zero. I'm going to use my a charm that we have. We're going to go ahead and crystal pendulum here, exhaust it, and call a zero. Because if I get it, then I actually get a card too. That'll be awesome. Let's see how we do. I got... Oh, negative one. Oh no, that's like the story of her life. We're going to go ahead, shake it up again. She's going to use her power this time. I forgot about her power. And we're going to go ahead and draw three tokens. And we're going to hopefully get this done. Let's see, one, two, and three. Wow, negative one, negative one, negative two. All fail. All right, didn't matter which one we keep. We don't get it. We're going to use our last action to go ahead and try to get this. This is amazing. Wow, it's like the crate that can never be found. Let's see what we found this time. Plus one, yes, we finally did it. We were able to put our last clue on the crate of goods. We're going to exhaust her. Now, of course, I'm going to open this crate, and it's going to be like the killer monster here of death. Let's see what we find. Hopefully, it's a fun and fantastic item or spell or something awesome. It is the Crimson Ledger. Item, relic, cursed. Oh, no. Take control of Crimson Letter. Remove the Crimson Ledger from the game. Take X Horror, where X is the remaining health of a non-elite enemy in play discard that enemy oh no all right remove so i have to keep this that's terrible it says from the game take horror where x is the remaining health of the non-elite enemy in play so if i have there's one left i can go ahead and use this and i can get rid of it and take one horror that's probably the best thing's going to happen that was terrible that was the worst crate ever <laughs> a yucky yucky barf crate all right we're going to go ahead and get rid of our clues that we used and that's the end of our turn there's no enemies on the board we're going to go ahead and go into our upkeep phase turn both our characters up and go ahead and get a resource and a card. 
So Cho is actually up to two resources, which is actually pretty good. We're going to gain a card he has received. Get over here. All right, one of his spirit cards. He's got a total of one, two, three, four, five, so he's doing just fine as cards. Oh, six. He's got six cards. Forgot about that one. So he doesn't have too many. We're going to go on to Jacqueline. Jacqueline, who has the Tome Ledger, awesome, of death and yuck and yuck. We're going to go ahead and see what she gets, though, for a card. Persistent. It says max commit one per skill test. After you commit persistence to a skill test, name, even odd or symbol. After this test ends, if the chaos token of the named type was revealed during this test, you may return a spell card from your discard pile to your hand. Oh, that's really good. That's fantastic. So now I can use some of those spell cards I've been saving in case I need to use them. I can use them for skill tests and bring them back with that card. That's great. I'll tell you, if those cultists were actually laughing at us trying to open that crate, it's probably bursting out in complete, utter, hilarious laughter when they actually opened it. We're going to go ahead and have Cho draw up his card. He has found Right of the Deep. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. Then, if, there, if you are at the same location as the enemy that has Doom on it, take two Horror. If there are no cultist enemies in place, search the encounter deck and discard pile for a cultist enemy and draw it, shuffle the encounter deck. All right, let's see what his last card is. It's a cultist. He can get it. Nope. All right, we're going to go ahead and search this for a cultist. So we're just going to draw from the top till we find a cultist. Nope. Nope. Yes. Oh, good. Another one of these guys. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that in the location. I'm going to go ahead and shuffle up this encounter deck. We're going to put the encounter deck right back down here, and we're going to have Jacqueline draw from it now and see what she has found. She has found, oh, this one. Test two willpower. The test gets plus two difficulty if your location is exhausted. It's not exhausted. For each point you fail by, take one horror. Let's go ahead and draw from the bag. I'm not going to add anything, and I'm not going to use her power because she's got pretty good willpower. Let's see how this goes. She got a, oh, an elder sign. She gets plus one. And if I choose to ignore it, I can draw a card. Well, I can't ignore it because it's the only card, I, one I drew. So we succeeded at this test. We're going to go ahead and discard this, put this back in our bag, and move into our turn. We're going to go ahead and put our plus one token here. Of course, I did forget to do that before I drew for her event, but that's okay. She drew an elder sign. I know it was still in there. It's not going to be the end of the world. We're going to continue moving. We're going to move into, I think Cho again is going to have to take this guy out. So he's going to go ahead and engage with him and try to take him out. Now, of course, our other two crates are here and here, meaning I have to move here and here, or I can move here and here. Now, we don't know what's in the library, but we do know what's in the dining car, and that's nothing but I don't know what's up in the deck lounge or the sun deck. I would think I'm going to go for the library up to the sun deck. Libraries are usually pretty good, though I know our guys aren't very book smart. We have seen this in action because this took forever to get through. We're going to go ahead now and take out the sea singer first. We're going to go ahead and see if you can just hit him straight up and do some damage. We're going to go ahead and draw a token. We got a negative one. That's enough to do one health to our sea singer. We're going to go ahead and punch it again. Looking back on this, I probably should have played my one-two punch on this creature, but that's okay. We're going to go ahead and grab a skull. That's a negative two. Again, that's okay. That's enough to kill him. I get my token back. This guy is dead. We're going to discard him. And we're going to go ahead and exhaust Cho. That's all three of his actions. We're going to move into her actions. The first thing she's going to do is move over to the library. She's going to go ahead and read what the library says. It says, the library is on the smaller side, but is furnished with ornate seating chairs, heavy bookcases, and a surprising selection of tomes regarding the occult. A plaque reads, special donation on loan from the La Grasse collection. Let's see what it says here. It has an action. Spend two clues, test three books to learn more information about the cult. If you succeed, get, seal the negative five and add one of those to the chaos bag for the remainder of the scenario. Forced at the end of the round, if there are fewer than uh, investigator and clues in the library, add clues to the library until there are one clue equal for each person. Okay, we're not going to be doing this, but look at this. It's worth victory five if you decide to do this. Wow, out of control. The problem is I have to spend a clue to do it, and I barely can get any of these clues to begin with. So she's not going to take advantage of that. She can totally bypass it and move up to the sun deck. We're going to see what's on the sun deck. Hopefully nothing too bad and terrible and evil. It says, this is the place where passengers would normally come to soak up the, some sunshine and enjoy the view. Unfortunately, the current view is of the unsettling kind. Sun deck. Fight. Test X. X is the fight value of the, an enemy at your location. If you succeed, shuffle that enemy into the encounter deck. If you fail, move to open water. Oh, terrible. 
a railing of wood and metal is all that separates anyone from the plunging into the water below. Whoa, yuck. So interestingly, we don't actually have to kill enemies in this location. We can actually knock them off the edge. Of course, the problem is they can knock us off the edge as well. We're going to go ahead then and exhaust Jacqueline, but there's no enemies on the board yet again, so we're going to unexhaust our characters, move into our gain resources, and also our card. The resource for him goes here. He's up to three, which isn't too bad. Too bad I don't have my ally. He decided I had to discard him. Oh, I get my physical training, which isn't too bad. Sadly, he doesn't have a lot of resources right now to use on this, but he could use it to gain some willpower if I ever needed to. We put that over here. We're up to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, so I'm going to have to use some cards pretty soon, or I'm going to lose them. We're going to go to Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going to gain a resource, and I'm still sad that I've got this tome up here, this Crimson Ledger. That's terrible. We're going to see what card she gains. She has gained another Crystal Pendulum, which I can use at least for some willpower if I need to at some point. We're again going to add some Doom to our agenda. 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. Only three left. I've got to find that book. All right, let's see what we get. We have got Order Enforcer. This is for Cho. Cho is going to gain the Order Enforcer. He's totally fine with this. He has dealt with them in the past. And what is going to happen to Jacqueline? Jacqueline has to deal with the clap of thunder. She is going to test three and see how this goes. I don't think she's going to commit anything because she's got, she's got a pretty good willpower to begin with. Let's see how this goes. We're going to draw ahead and draw a token. We got a plus one. Wow, she's totally fine. We're going to discard our thunderclap and we're going to move into our turn. All right, so I apparently didn't understand this card. This card's actually good. This card isn't bad at all. I can take Horde to actually discard enemies. I was thinking I would actually just take Horde straight up. I didn't read the card correctly or understand what it was talking about. It says, the list calls for you to add a name. So it's kind of like the Death Note. I can go ahead and add a person's name to this, and I discard that enemy. Now, of course, it can't be an elite enemy. I'm going to take Horror for their remaining health. So at this point, I could use it on Jacqueline's turn to take two Horror because he has two health left, and I could remove the Enforcer, or at least discard it which isn't bad. What we're going to do, though, is spend two resources for Cho, who's going to go first and play his 1-2 punch. And he's able to do one plus one for this attack, then plus two for the attack as well, and deal plus one damage. So here we go. We're going to go ahead and try one of these George Foreman 1-2 punches. We're going to go ahead and draw a token and see how we do with our first punch. We got a negative four. So he's got five, six, seven, eight because of this card right here. He gets plus one for the boxing gloves, plus one for his ally, and he gets plus one from this card. So that's eight minus four is I'm able to hit him, and I do one damage. Now, also, this card, this token actually, is going to do an extra thing. It says right here, if you succeed, ready your location or exhaust a deep one enemy. There are no deep one enemies, so that's not actually going to take place. This guy is a human cultist. He's not a deep one enemy. All right, we're going to go ahead and draw another token and see how we go for our second attack here on this guy with our one-two punch. We got the same token. That's hilarious. All right, we've gone ahead and killed him. He did This time I did a total of one, two, three damage, one from this card, one from the attack, and one, of course, I'm going to use Nathaniel's ability here to deal the one additional damage. So I've done three damage in the last hit, meaning I have overkilled him by two. I'm going to go ahead and put a couple of these on our Relentless card. So our Relentless card is going to gain two of those tokens. I do get to look at the top six cards of my deck, one, two, three, four, five, six, and see if we find any Spirit cards in there. We have found Safeguard, Dodge, Glory, which is a good one, Stand Together. Oh, this is that one where choose another investigator at your location, both you and that investigator gain two resources. Get over here. Oh, a lot of really good cards in here. I don't know which one to take. The glory gets me. I have a lot of cards right now. We're going to do stand together. I'm going to go ahead and take this and shuffle these back into my deck. With our first action complete, we have two more to do. Now, we could move one, two up to here and at least be with Jacqueline while she's there at this location trying to open that crate. Or I could move over here and try to open the crates myself. Now, sadly, we know that his intellect is even worse than hers, and hers was absolutely terrible to try to open these crates. So he's just going to move one, two up there and exhaust. We're going to go into Jacqueline's turn, and the only thing I can do is we've got to try to get this crate of goods. So we're going to see if we're able to do this. We're going to go ahead and see about our crate of goods. We're going to reach into our bag here. We need to get a zero or a plus one or something. I'm going to use my ability to grab three tokens. And I'm going to choose zero with my charm and see how this goes. We're going to grab these three right here. One, two, and three. Oh, we got two zeros and a negative two. That's awesome. All right. So not only did we get one of the clue tokens from, I'm actually going to take Cho's clue. 
We're going to go ahead and put chose clue there. It does say anybody. It says I can place one of, at, if you succeed, an investigator at your location may place one of his or her clues on the creative good. So I'm going to choose chose clue. And then, of course, we did call zero. So we get to draw a card. If the test succeeds by the number or fails by that number, draw a card. We're going to gain a card and see what we get. Come on, something the book. We got a wild symbol. I'm totally going to use that right now. Let's see what this says, though, before I use it, because I might be doing something dumb. Take the top four cards in the encounter deck. Nope, totally fine. We're going to use this as a wild. I'm going to gain plus one to my intellect. We're going to go ahead and reveal some of these tokens, and hopefully something good happens here. I need to get a zero minus one or something. Let's see how this goes. Come on, something good. Oh, wow. <laughs> we got the auto fail. All right, and we did not find anything. That's too bad. That was her second action, though. She has a third action, but sadly, I don't get anything. I don't have any bonuses. We're again at straight up zeros here. We're going to see how this goes. Come on, don't draw that fail symbol again. That would be absolutely horrible. Let's see what we find. We have found a negative one. I wish we would have got this the last time, but sadly, I did not. That's the end of her action. We're going to go ahead and flip her over, and wow, that's it. We don't have any enemies on the board. We have done absolutely fantastic keeping those off the board. Sadly, I can't open a crate to save my life. We can punch demons and cultists right into oblivion, but we can't open a crate. Maybe we should start punching the crates. Maybe that might actually help something. Joe's going to go ahead and gain a resource and draw a card. He has found another counter punch. That's awesome. He'll go ahead and take that. Let's see what his card count's up to. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Oh, I do have to discard a card because you can only have up to seven cards. Now, the problem is I don't want to get rid of any of these cards. These are all really good. I got to play some of these cards. What do I do? I think we're going to get rid of, oh no, I don't want to know. I don't think there's anything to get rid of. Well, good news. I haven't played Arkham Horror in a while and I totally forgot it's eight cards, not seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Next turn, I have to play a card or that's when I actually start losing cards. Let's go get some for Jacqueline. The resource queen over here has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight resources and another card. Please be an intellect card. We have found Voyeur's Voice of Ra, which is absolutely hilarious. I don't need to get any more resources. We're going to go ahead and add that to our hand, and we're going to move into the Mythos phase. And here we are with nine, now ten Doom on this, this agenda, and I need twelve. And then we advance a two, four, six, eight, ten. So I have two more rounds to try to find that dragon thing or something. All right, let's see what happens to Cho. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. There aren't any. I'm going to go ahead and find a cultist enemy inside these decks. That's not a cultist enemy. This is a cultist enemy. This is going to go, it's going to be spawned on Cho. We're going to go ahead and shuffle now our thing back together. I believe that's what it says. We're going to go ahead and discard pile for a cultist enemy. Draw it, shuffle the encounter decks. We're going to go ahead and shuffle our encounter deck and see what happens. We're going to go ahead and place it back down, and now it's going to be Jacqueline's turn, and she has found lights out. Attach to your location limit one per location. Attach location gain plus two shroud. Uh, you cannot play assets with a cost lower than the shroud of this location. While at this location, okay, and I discard it once I am able to be successfully investigate everything. So we're going to go ahead and put our lights out on this. Now, actually, now that I think about it, this place has no clues. So it does say, after attached location is successfully investigated, discard lights out. So there are no clues here to investigate, so I don't see why I would have to put this lights out on there. I'll put it on there because I don't think it's really going to matter. But I believe I'm supposed to actually probably not put it on there. Let me know in the comments below what you think. Should I have that on there or not? And if so, that means the other lights out card I have in the passenger cabins probably shouldn't be there as well. Of course, our order enforcer is uh, Cho's best friend. He's, they've been running around trying to take revenge for everything he's been doing to them on the boat. And we're all set to go. Joe's going to go ahead and play some cards. He's going to go ahead and play, clean them out, fight. When this action begins, gain two resources. He gets two resources before he actually punches the guy. So he's up to four resources now, which is absolutely fantastic. We're going to go ahead and draw our token bag and see how we do against this enforcer. All right, let's see. He is going to, he has hit the enforcer for negative two. That's totally fine. I've got plenty of power for that. So we've done one damage to our order enforcer. Now we're going to go ahead and see if there's something else to play. Actually, I don't think I have to play anything at all. I forgot about his power. When you deal damage to an enemy by an event or fight ability on an event, deal one additional damage. I'm going to use that right now because our clean them out was a spirit event with a fight action on it. So we're going to go ahead and actually kill this guy in our first hit, which is absolutely fantastic. So we don't have to worry about drawing other cards. But now we have to figure out what we're going to do. 
Sadly, for my next turn, I was actually planning to play Safeguard, which would have been really good, but I forgot that our Lights Out doesn't let us play assets that are lower than the Shroud value, and the Shroud value of our location is actually 4 right now. So instead, what I'm going to do is we're going to go ahead and play our event Stand Together. I might as well choose another investigator at your location. Both investigators gain plus 2 resources. Why not? Can't go wrong with resources. So we're going to go ahead and give 2 resources to Cho. He's got 6, and Jacqueline's got a billion. She... She's like Scrooge McDuck. She's got a million assets up there, or resources. And that's going to be really about it for him. Three, six. I guess what he could do is he could draw a card. We haven't seen our weaknesses yet, and I'm kind of worried about that. Maybe we should just grab another resource. You can never have too many resources either. Well, unless you're Jacqueline, then I think you can have too many resources. So we're going to go ahead and give him one more. So moving into Jacqueline's turn, we're going to go ahead and exhaust Cho. She has to try to get this crate open. This is ridiculous. I can't get this crate open. All right, we're going to go ahead and test our books. Now, sadly, I can't lose, use clairvoyance to get my extra powers because this isn't an investigate action. This is just a test of my books. I'm going to use her ability so I can grab three tokens. We're going to grab one, two, three. We're also going to claim zero on that candle, and let's see how this goes. I got a negative one. That's terrible. I got a Negative five, even more terrible. And oh, the Elder Sign. Yes, I'm going to discard these two. And we're going to go ahead and keep our Elder Sign. That's plus one, which means we were able to open this crate. Again, I'm going to use Cho's Clue. We're going to discard them to open the crate and see what's inside. And I'm, of course, going to put this back in the bag because that's our bread and butter right there. We need that thing more than anything. Now, let's see what we got. We have found the Abyssal Sword. So not the dragon thing I'm looking for. Well, guess where it is. <laughs> not where my guys are. All right. Choose an investigator at your location to take control of the Abyssal Sword. You get plus one uh, in, uh, willpower. Fight. You get plus one fight and deal plus one damage for this attack. If you draw any of those symbols and it is revealed during this attack, the attack deals two additional damage. Wow, this is amazing. I kind of want to give it to Cho, but... He already has those boxing gloves that are doing really good for him. I think I'm going to keep this on her. I know she gains more willpower, which what does she need all this willpower for? He has the one that actually needs the willpower. He only has three. But she doesn't have any way to actually help with her fight right now. So we're going to go ahead and take this. She is going to keep it. The Abyssal Sword actually looks pretty awesome. We found our last one here. We're going to go ahead now and move. we got two more actions. So Jacqueline's going to go ahead and move on down, move on down the road. She's going to come to the bridge. It says right here, the bridge is filled with controls designed to operate this monstrosity of a vessel. There are sparks flying from a few corners, but most of the room seems operational. All right, four shroud, two clues, deck three. If you have restarted the engines, test three books. If you succeed, add one of these to the chaos bag for the remainder of the scenario. Please tell me why I would want to add a negative four to the bag. Unless, of course, I'm allowed to exhaust a deep one at my location if I draw it, but, oh, wow. All right, we're going to go ahead and put that there. I could go ahead and try to do this. I do so well with these books. Why not give it another shot? I think we have to keep our eye on the prize. This is not the prize. That's the prize. we got to move over here, exhaust ourselves because we're done. That's our last move. we got to the deck, lounge, and theater. It says right here, the lounge and theater would usually be filled with the jovial passengers in search of company and entertainment, but right now it is empty and silent. Behind the stage is an almost labyrinthian maze of halls and rooms, but there are countless costumes and props to be found here. So let's see what happens. Four shroud, one thing. Forced. After you enter the deck, lounge, and theater, lose one resource for each action you have remaining. Well, I've got none, so that's fantastic. Spend one clue to put the top card of your deck into play face down as a disguise asset. This card gains disguise card. All enemies gain aloof until the end of the round. Group limit once per game. All right, so that's not too bad. We'll see what we can do about that. Well, sadly, we're not going to be doing this because I need all the clues I can get to try to open this last crate of goods. So that's going to be the end of our turn. There are no monsters on the board, of course, so we're going to go into our upkeep phase, and we're going to unexhaust both of our characters, gain a resource, and draw a card. Nathaniel's going to go ahead and grab a resource. He's also then going to grab his next card. He has found, oh, another one of those Gerter Wagner cards. All right, this might be something useful. I could actually use her for something, like taking more damage, and then I can put her right back out again. That'd be actually really good. Of course, Captain Moneybags up here is also going to grab a resource and a card, and she has found the Scrying Mirror. Four secrets. After a skill test at your location begins, exhaust Scrying Mirror to spend one secret. Perform the reveal token step of the test. Now, before committing cards instead of 
after committing cards. Oh my gosh, this is perfect. This is totally going down the table and I'm totally going to use it right away. So this is coming down to the wire. We're at 11 doom on this agenda card. We're going to gain a card for Cho. He has found a sealed door. That's totally fine. He can bust that door wide open. And Jacqueline has found Oh, let's test our willpower too. That's no problem. If I fail, I'm going to take horror by how many I fail by. Well, she's got quite a bit of willpower, so we're just going to go ahead and draw our token and see what we get. We have managed to come up with a negative four. Oh, I don't think that's going to be good at all. Well, she has five willpower plus one from her charm, so that's six minus four is two, so she actually still passed, which is fantastic. I didn't expect that. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in the bag, and we're going to move into our turn. So we have a big dilemma at this point. I have Ritual Candles and the Abyssal Sword both being used by my hand slots. So if I wanted to use the Scry Mirror, I would have to discard one of these. So what we're going to do is we're actually going to go ahead and oh, I could draw three tokens and keep one, but I need to put in a book. All right, here's what we're going to do. I'm going to go ahead and I think we are going to discard the Ritual Candles. That Abyssal Sword is just out of control and play down our scrying mirror. And if we do that, we can use the secret to see what our card is, our token is going to be and decide if we want to add anything to it. Or I could just go ahead and add plus one right now and draw from here and see what happens. I think that's what we're going to do. We're going to go ahead and commit this card to our hand and we're going to go ahead and draw our tokens. And if I do that and get one of my negative two tokens, I would actually pass it. Then I could play my Scrying Mirror, but at that point, why would I use the Scrying Mirror? Because I don't have any more cards I could commit to this test. Does Cho have any cards he could commit to the test? Cho has this card he could commit, but she's really good, and I think I want to keep her just in case I lose her. Getting plus one fight isn't too bad. So I think we're going to just go ahead, and I think we're going to... I don't know what to do here. I think we're going to get rid of the Ritual Candles. We're just going to discard them, and we are going to play down our Scrying Mirror. It's going to cost me three to do this, but we're going to go ahead and pay those three to put down our Scrying Mirror, and we're going to go ahead and put some charges on it. So our Scrying Mirror is going to go ahead and gain some charges. Of course, those are pretty awesome for secrets, but that's pretty cool. Now we're going to go ahead and try to see if we can find this thing. Now, sadly, I don't know the odds of how this is supposed to work out. Should I use the Scrying Mirror on the one token I'm going to draw, or should I use it on the three that I'm going to gain from her? I think we're just going to go ahead and use the scrying mirror right now. We're going to go ahead and give up one secret. After the test of your location begins, I can exhaust the scrying mirror, which I'm going to do. This allows me to reveal the token before I go ahead and commit cards. So let's go ahead and reveal our token. And if it's a negative one, I know I can play my card that gives me plus one. I've got, well, a negative five isn't going to help anything at all. There's no way I can get from that. All right, so that failed. So now I guess we might as well just use the three. I can draw three tokens and hope to get a thing. We'll see how this goes. We're going to draw three. Okay, here we go. One, two, and three. I'm trying to find three in the bag. There we go. I have found a negative one, a negative two, and oh, zero. Okay, fantastic. Okay, well, at least we got one token on here. We got one of our clues on here before the end of the round. It's not the end of the world. We'll see how this goes. We're going to put it on our crate. That's the end of her. She is exhausted. We're going to move into Cho's turn. He's going to have to through the, bust through the door and run over here, but he's not going to have any t turns left to be able to try to get this crate of goods. So the first thing we have to do is bust down this door. So we're going to go ahead and test his fight. Let's see how this goes. We got a negative four. He's got five plus one, two is six minus four is two. He failed. He's going to go ahead and put this back in here. He's going to go ahead and test that again. We got to bust through this door. We got to get out of here. He got, what did I get? A negative two minus four plus, he's got six minus that is four. He was able to bust through this door. I needed to test strength four. So he has one action left. And we're going to go ahead and play safeguard. We're going to pay our two resources to play that asset. Again, without any enemies on the board, we're going to go ahead and unexhaust our characters, get some resources, and draw a card. Cho's going to go ahead and gain one resource, kind of get our stuff back together again. Also, grab a card. He has gotten get over here. So we have this card already in our hand, but that's okay. We're at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're doing okay. Got to remember to play cards sometimes. Jacqueline is also going to gain a resource, and she's going to draw a card. She has found another persistent, which isn't too bad. We're going to put that over here. 
At this point, we now have to add one Doom to the location. That brings us to 3, 6, 9, 10, 11, 12. That is enough to advance our agenda deck. So let's go ahead and read what it says. Forced. At the end of the enemy phase, place one Doom on each crate of goods or for each ready cultist enemy at its location. Remove all Doom from the crate of goods when it's flipped. Totally forgot to do that. I just realized I did not do that. And there were a couple times that we had those guys sitting in the passenger cabins. I totally didn't do that, but that's okay. We're going to continue forward. It says right here, cries of joy erupt throughout the ship as the cultists have found their prize. Strange chanting begins to ring through the corridors. And it is clear that a ritual of some kind has begun. Within minutes, the ship begins to rock sickeningly. Even worse, there is a, the sound of metal rending. Unspeakable creatures have been summoned from the deep, and they are beginning to claw their way on into the constellation. Search the face-down copies of Crate of Goods for the Tablet of Dragon. Spawn the set-aside Luther Marsh empowered and enthralled enemy at the bridge and attach Tablet of Dragon to him. Remove each other crate of goods from the game. Shuffle the encounter discard pile and each encounter card from Deep One and the Sinking Ship encounter set into the encounter deck. Exhaust each deck one location. Advance the Act deck to Act 3A. Plug the Abyss. Advance to Agenda 3A. Summon those below. Wow, lots we have to do. So we have to go ahead and summon Luther Marsh right here in the bridge. He is massive, retaliate, human, sorcerer, elite. He's got 10 health and 4 and 4. And he is empowered and enthralled, of course. It says Luther Marsh cannot be defeated by damage. Forced. After Luther Marsh attacks you, test fight. If you fail, move to a connecting location. Challenge me, and you challenge the depths themselves. Fantastic. We're going to put him right here. Now, he has to attach the Tablet of Dragon to him, which I guarantee you is right here because we found the other two things. Tablet of Dragon. Ta-da! It says, Item Relic. Revelation. It says, Tablet, take control of the Tablet of Dragon. Investigate. Your location gets plus one shroud for this test. If you succeed, move a deep one enemy to a connecting location. All right, we're going to attach that to him. So that's the first thing we have to do. Now we're going to go ahead and shuffle the encounter discard pile with all the rest of the encounter cards. So we're going to add the encounter deck of the deep ones and the ship is sinking cards to our encounter deck. And we're going to shuffle this all up. So this is going to become a massive, huge deck now. Wow, this is going to be out of control. With this all shuffled up, we're going to move on to our next thing. It also tells us that we have to exhaust the deck one cards, which is the bottom row. The second row is deck two, and of course the top row is deck three. We now have to go to our Act Deck 3A, Plug the Abyss. And let's see what it says. It says, the ritual has begun that will call something terrible from below. The monster storming the ship may just be the heralds. With the tablet in their hands of the cultists, you must stop the ritual at all cost. While Luther Marsh has no remaining health, Tablet of Dragon gains action. Spend one clue. Reveal five chaos tokens. If any of those tokens are revealed, seal it on ta Tablet of Dragon. If at least one of each of those symbols is sealed on the Tablet of Dragons, it is destroyed. The objective is to de if the Tablet of Dragons is destroyed, advance. Fantastic. Now we're going to go ahead and see what our agenda deck says. So our agenda deck has to go to 3A, summon those below. So we're going to go ahead and discard this one. We have punish the interlopers. Nope, summon the below. Let's see what happened. Summon those below. Creatures from the deep have begun to climb aboard the ship, called forth by the ritual of the cultists and the pulsating tablet. Exhaust locations do not ready during the upkeep phase. Each cultist enemy gets plus one fight and plus one evade, and there's only two doom before this goes on, and I think we're in big, big trouble. <laughs> That was just the beginning of the Mythos phase. We now have to go ahead and draw some of our cards here. We're going to go ahead and draw one for Cho. He has found sealed door. Wow, he just busted through the door and the door slams shut again. And we're going to draw one for Jacqueline. Jacqueline has found Ocean's Maw. Here's that one that you're going to fall all the way into the open water if you don't pass this test. All right, that's going to be absolutely terrible. Since I don't want to fall into the ocean, I'm going to use my scrying mirror. We're going to go ahead and draw our token first. And then we're going to go ahead and... Uh, see what I need to do to make sure I don't fall into the ocean. Let's draw our token and see what we get. 
we got a negative two, so I don't need to actually do anything to still not fall in the ocean, which is fantastic, because I've got a five willpower, or six actually, minus two, means I'm gonna be safe. There were only a few tokens that would have actually caused me a lot of damage here, but I just didn't want to risk the fact that I could have fallen into the open water. If we have any chance of taking him down, I have to have three clues. Right now I only have one. I wasted the rest opening up crates. That didn't really help me. Well, they kind of did, I got some cool items. We're gonna go ahead and move one down here. And she's going to go ahead and try to find these clues. The shroud value is only two, and she has a three intellect, so she has a decent chance at this. We're going to go ahead and use her power for this one. We're going to go ahead and draw three tokens. I'm also going to use that lamp, or that charm, which I should have used when I drew this card right here, because I already knew what the token was going to be, but I didn't do that. Instead, what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use our three here. We're going to draw to three tokens, and I'm going to guess negative one, and see how, or I'm going to pass this by... I'm going to pass this right on at zero. It's going to be a zero win right here. Nope, I did got it wrong, but that's okay. I did actually win. I got zero, which means I actually got a three. So I did gain a clue from that location, which is perfect. Now we're going to go ahead and put these back in here. We're going to draw another token and hope that we are able to get this. I don't have anything that's going to help this test, I don't think. Maybe I do. I might have one thing. I do. I have a clairvoyance card. Let's go ahead and use the clairvoyance card for the plus one. So I'm actually sitting at a four on a two. This might be good. It is good. We were able to get that last clue. So we have all the clues we need to actually win as long as we pull the right stuff from the bags. That's the big ticket right there. We're going to go ahead and exhaust her. She's done. It's Cho Punch 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 Man. Let's see what he can do to this guy. Now, before he can be punch, punch, man to this guy, he's got to punch, punch, punch through this door. <laughs> I totally forgot about the door. So we're going to go ahead first and bust through that door. I have a six fight on a four. We're just going to go ahead and draw some tokens and see how this goes. Hopefully it goes pretty well or we're going to have a big problem. Negative two, perfect. We boom, boom through this door. Bust through that door. We're going to go running over here, which means I only have one action left. But we've got to go ahead and try to hit this guy. It's the best I can do. Let's see what we can do with Cho. I'm going to go ahead and play Vicious Blow, giving us plus one to this skill check, and we're going to see how this goes. We're going to go reach in our token bag here, and we pulled out a negative one. That is enough to go ahead and hit this guy for three damage. I was able to do one for the actual attack, one for our Savage Blow, and I get one because I'm going to use Cho's power. So he's down to five plus times two is ten. He's down to what? Seven? Seven's not too bad. He's exhausted, and he's about to get blasted by Luther Marsh here, but that's okay. We're going to discard our card. I just realized I forgot to put some charges on our flesh board. We're going to go ahead and put those there. Now I could go ahead and take the hit from him. He's going to do two and two. I could go ahead and soak up one of the horror hits, bringing me to three damage on both if I wanted to, or I think I might go ahead and use a dodge card. Our dodge is going to cost us one. It's going to allow us to play when an enemy attacks and investigate your location, cancel the attack. It's going to cost us one of our resources. That's fine. Now I'm going to go ahead and use my counterpunch fast. Play after an enemy attacks you, even if the attack was canceled. Fight. This attack targets the attacking enemy. Now, of course, this is a spirit tactics event card, but I've already used his ability to do the extra damage, so I can't do any extra damage, but at least punching him back after taking no damage seems like a win-win to me. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this fight to it. I don't see me using those cards for anything else at this point. We're going to go ahead and reach in our bag here and see how we do. We have dodged and punched him back, just like a true boxer at negative three. So we have five, six, seven, eight. So we're going to go ahead and hit him for one more damage. So he's up to four health, and I haven't taken any damage from him yet, which is pretty good. Next, we're going to go ahead and unexhaust all of our investigators here and go ahead and grab a resource and we're going to draw a card. He's going to gain his resource back that he just spent on dodge, and he's going, oh, we got another dodge! That's perfect. All right, that's awesome. Cho is just the man, I tell you. And Jacqueline's going to gain a resource, and she's also going to get a card. Let's see what she has found. She has found Familiar Spirit. I might put this out just in case I get flown into the water. I can throw the cat instead. Oh, that's so terrible. That sounds so bad, but at least it wouldn't be me going into the water. All right, we're going to go ahead and put this in our hand, and now we're going to go into the Mythos phase. The first thing we do is put our first of two Doom onto our agenda. Draw a card for Cho. He has found Taking on Water, Peril, Revelation. Exhaust a ready location with the lowest possible deck number. Okay, so I get to choose that one from what I understand. And now it's going to be Jacqueline's turn. Jacqueline is going to have seasickness again. So after she moves, she's going to have difficulty on her test. But that's okay. I can get rid of it at the beginning of the turn. 
There are four locations at deck two. I don't think it's really gonna matter which one. I'm gonna do the galley because we don't even know what's over there. Sorry, galley, never went over to get some food. I guess my guys had enough food as it is. At this point, I think Cho is just gonna punch, punch, punch. He's gonna do a triple punch. We're gonna go ahead and draw some tokens and see how he does against this evil dude here. His first one is a negative two, totally fine. We were able to hit him for one. We've got plenty of fight. We've got six, so minus two is four. Actually, now that I think about it, I think I might commit another card to the next one because that was a little bit close. We're going to go ahead and commit this to our next skill check of our fight. Let's see how we do. We're going to go ahead and draw a oh, negative five. There we go. That's going to be terrible. No matter how much I committed this time, we did not succeed, and this character has retaliate. Now, the way retaliate works is if you don't succeed in your attack, it hits back. And he's going to hit for two health and two horror. So I'm going to go ahead and use my flesh ward to soak up one of the horror damage. And we're going to take two damage to ourselves and one to our brain. So that leaves Cho with only three sanity left, but he's got plenty of health. It's the sanity I'm really worried about. Now, to do that, of course, I do have to exhaust my flesh ward card. Now we're going to go ahead and attack him again. And sadly, I'm sure everybody has been saying this to the camera and I should have done this. I should have put on my physical training before he walked over here because I could have been using all those resources I have to help with my fight skills. Sadly, I didn't do it. Instead, I'm going to go ahead and play this to give myself a plus one fight. And we're going to go ahead and see how this goes. Oh, I hope it goes better than that negative five. That was really bad. Let's see what we got. We got negative one. That's way better. So we've done another wound to him. That brings his total to six. We're going to remove these two. And it's going to be going into Jacqueline's turn now. Cho is going to become exhausted. Oh, and we'll see what she can do. Moving into Jacqueline's turn, I totally missed the fact that I had a clairvoyance card out. I could have used this to gain those clues instead of trying to rack my brain around it. I wasn't trying to test to get those clues. I was actually investigating, and I could have used that at least once. Now, I'm going to discard it because I want to put out Azure Flame. I'm going to pay the two and use my Robes of Endless Night to do that. So that brings this one out. It's going to go ahead and gain four charges which we're going to go ahead and place right down here. That's my first action. My second action is probably going to be to move up there, and my third action is going to be to move into there as well. Of course, I was thinking about putting out my familiar, which I might still do, but I think getting into that room with that cultist or that sorcerer would be our best bet in case I get another person in there. Then we can work together to try to take everything down. So Jacqueline's going to go ahead and move one, two into this room, but she's not going to be engaged with him. She's just going to hang out over there. She's exhausted, and we're going to move into the monster's turn, who is going to go ahead and hit Cho for two health and two sanity yet again. But remember, Cho's got some tricky, tricky tricks. He's going to go ahead and again dodge the attack by paying his one resource, and then he's going to counter punch and see how this goes. Hopefully pretty good. We're going to use Jacqueline's ability to allow him to use the three tokens from his bag to go ahead and see if he hits him with his counter punch. He's got one, two, three, four tokens. That's wrong. We're going to mix these up again instead and draw three instead of four. We're going to draw one, two, and three. There we go. We got a plus one, which is probably going to be the winner right there or two negative fours. Well, I don't really like the negative fours. So we're going to go with the plus one. So that means our counter punch hit. And that counter punch is an event that has fight on it, which means I can use Cho's ability to actually do two damage to him. So he's down to three, six, seven, eight damage. He's almost down to the last two. Then all we have to do is try to get those tokens onto the tablet of dragon now i'm beginning to understand why we want to try to get these into our bag to begin with i was wondering why i wanted these negative four tokens in there joe's going to unexhaust all of his stuff and he's going to unexhaust himself grab a card oh no self-destruct put self-destruct into play in the threat area when you deal one or more damage to an enemy take one damage oh no that's not a good thing to have when you're in a fist fight with a giant sorcerer demon and now what else do we get? A resource. I'm going to go ahead and give him one resource. Jacqueline is also going to gain a resource and a card. Let's see what she has found. Another one of these guys. Okay, well, we got two cats. We can start adding them and we can start putting cats out here. Now we're going to be putting our second doom on our agenda, which is going to advance the agenda yet again. So let's see what happens. It says... The ship tilts to one side for a moment, emitting a terrible groan as more water rushes into its wounds. Exhaust a ready location at the lowest possible deck number. If all locations are exhausted, each investigator is defeated and suffers one physical trauma. Otherwise, flip this agenda back to 3A. Okay, so we're back to 3A again. Oh man, this is terrible. 
So again, we have to exhaust a location. I guess I'll just exhaust that one. We're down to two, three, four locations. So we got to take this guy out fast. Cho now has to go ahead and draw a card from our event deck. He has found, oh no, an order enforcer. He is going to be engaged with that. And now let's see what happens to Jacqueline. Jacqueline is going to be, oh, she's got this one. That's awesome. She's got the Sea Singer. We lose our plus one token. So things are looking a little bit worse for the wear here for our team. We're going to go ahead into our phase and see what we can do. The first thing I'm going to do is I think we're going to start with Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going to go first. She's going to use her Crimson Ledger. We've kind of been saving this. I'm going to use it, and we're going to go ahead and get rid of her Sea Singer, meaning she's going to take two Horror because it had two health before I got rid of it. We're going to discard that. She's going to gain two Horror, bringing herself to seven. She has a total of nine normally, so she's at seven right now. Now the next thing she's going to do is she's going to fire off her Eldritch or Azure Flame, which means I can spend one of my charges to go ahead and use a fight, but this is going to use my willpower instead. So we're going to use one of our charges and go ahead and also discard our familiar card. We're going to add this to our test, giving us a 5, 6, 7 to our willpower. At this point, I am also going to use my Scrying Mirror we're going to get rid of that to see if we need to commit anything else to the test, which I should have done before I actually committed that card. We're going to not commit the, da the cat. We're just going to draw our token and see what we get. We got a plus one. So I didn't need to commit the, the cat. I should never have done it in the first place. And I'm also going to go ahead and use my crystal pendulum because now that I know the number that we're actually able to commit our thing by, I'm going to call that number. So the number we got is what? What do we have? Five, six seven. We got seven. We beat him by three. I'm going to call three. We're going to go ahead and be able to draw a card because of our pendulum there. And let's see what card we drew. We have drawn another Azure Flame. All right, we're going to add that to our hand. That's just fine. We'll go ahead and put this back in the token bag. Now, the problem is that was a plus one. And our Azure Flame states down here, if you pull a plus one, I have to take one damage. So I'm going to go ahead and gain a damage. She is down to five health. So we're going to put this on her character card. We're going to do two damage to him, which is going to be enough to put him out. But of course, it says we can't kill him with damage. He's at 369.10. That's fantastic. Now we have to try to seal that abyss. Let's see if we can do it. It says, if there, um, I had gains this action, spend one clue, reveal five chaos tokens. If any of those are revealed, seal it on the Tablet of Dragon. If at least one of each of these is on the Table of Dragons, destroy it. So we're going to go ahead with her final action to do that exact thing. So before we do that, I'm going to go ahead and look at our bag. Our bag states that we have a plus one, some zeros, negative one. We have three skulls, and that's it. These were set aside. I have to get these into the bag. I don't think I have all these in the bag. I don't even remember. If we look closely, I think I was able to do the one with the passenger cabins, meaning that we got one of the hooded figures in there. We also were able to do the start the engines one, which means we were able to add one of the heart tokens to the bag. But that's it. We have to go to the library. The library that is now exhausted, which is my... <laughs> that's fantastic. We have to spend a clue to test three here, or more about... We're going to have to seal this to get the negative five and add that to the bag. Well, we can't do that. It's exhausted. The only other place we haven't been is the galley. The galley is also exhausted. I don't know what we're going to do here. I don't think she's going to be able to seal this thing. I've got to find those three places. I don't think we're going to find them at all. No, no. I think she's got to move. She's going to have to move from here over to the deck lounge. And we got to get down to the galley, which means which is exhausted. I have to try to unexhaust it. I don't know how we're going to do that. So to try to find that last token to get in the bag, we have to go ahead and take this guy out, evade him, and go run to find this token. So we're going to go ahead first and try to take him out. He's going to go ahead and just fight him. Now this guy does have plus one fight because of our agenda deck. So he's at a four. I'm at a six. Let's see how this goes. I'm going to go ahead and check it out. We've got oh, a negative four. That's not going to be enough. It says if you succeed... Ready your location or exhaust a deep one enemy. Well, that's not going to happen. He's actually going to take two damage, which isn't too bad. He's got a lot of damage he can actually take. But this gives us a huge problem because I don't have any way to... Well, I'm still going to have to take this guy out. We're going to go ahead and draw another token. Let's see if we can hit him. 
We got a negative two. If you succeed, either deal one damage to a cultist enemy or remove one doom from a cultist enemy. We are going to deal one damage to this cultist enemy. This guy is dead. I've done two damage to him. He's gone. We're going to go ahead and use our boxing gloves to go ahead and look at the top six cards and look for a spirit card. Hopefully there's one that says add a lot to your def your flight skill. Nope, nothing stand together. This doesn't help with flight. So there's our weakness. We don't want that. All right, so now I'm looking for fleeing icons. There are none. Well, I get to take one of these into my hand anyway. We're going to take this one. I can draw a couple cards. That's not the end of the world and that because I'm almost out of cards anyway. He's got one more action, and he has to actually evade this guy. He's got a four. I've got an evasion of two. There's no way I'm going to be able to evade that guy. Well, at this point, the only place we can actually find this token is here, or like I said, the galley. He's up here engaged with Lucer March. He's taking all the damage. Fantastic. We have to get that token. I didn't realize this. This is terrible. He's actually going to move, which is bad. He's going to exhaust himself to move over here, and he's going to actually have to take the damage from Luther Marsh. But Luther Marsh is massive, so he's not actually going to follow Cho. He's going to stay right here on the bridge and just laugh at us as this dragon tablet sinks this ship. At this point, again, we are going to soak the horror hit and only take one. But we are going to have to take two damage, meaning that we're going to go ahead and get rid of these three, add two more. Let's see here. One, two, three. What are we going to be at? Three one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. We're going to be at seven, so I'm going to go ahead and remove three, six, and put one up here and add two threes, meaning he is getting really close to death. He's got what? He can take one, two, three, four, five, two Sandy, and three, six, seven, eight, nine, two life. So he can only take two more of each of these, and then he's dead. Now we're going to go ahead and move into the enemy phase. That's the only enemy we're totally fine. Sadly, I moved her in the wrong direction, though we are going to go explore the galley. Maybe we can get that token from over here. I'm not exactly sure. We're going to go ahead and flip these up. But of course, as I read through our setup instructions, I realize that I have totally gone in the wrong direction, mainly because there are only four tokens available that we have to find. And the one of them is right here in this thing. It says that I have to spend a clue test three and if you succeed, seal negative five and add this to the bag. Well, that's the only place it is, so I know it can't be over in the galley. So she's going to have to do a quick run over here, find that token, and come back in here. Be or else I can have him at least try to do it, but he's going to be clues. So he's going to have to look for some clues first, then try to do it. Oh, man, this is getting absolutely heart-wrenching. I don't think we can do this, but I'm really hoping we can. So Cho is going to take a resource, and he's going to draw a card, and he's also going to take another damage, and I'll explain why in a second. Flesh Ward, we're going to go ahead and add that to his thing. I forgot about his self-destructive. He did hit that one cultist for two damage, so he did deal one or more damage, so he has to take one damage. So he's hurt even more. I totally forgot about that. We're going to have to get rid of that at the beginning of the turn next turn, or he's probably going to die. Now we're going to go ahead and move into Jacqueline's. Jacqueline's going to gain a resource as well, draw a card, and she's going to try to get rid of her seasickness, which again, I forgot about that as well. She gets a scrying mirror, totally fine. We're going to go ahead and draw our token and see what we get to see if we can get rid of that seasickness. We've got a negative two, totally got rid of the seasickness. It would have probably happened the turn that I actually got it, wouldn't have been a big deal. Now we have to look at her cards. She's got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. She has to get rid of a card. We're going to get rid of our... We're going to get rid of one of the pets. That's totally fine. That's not a big deal. We're going to go ahead and ready all of our stuff. We're going to put our tokens back on our Azure Flame. Now that I don't need it, now I need the thing that finds me clues. I should try to get that back, which I can. I have a way of doing it. Moving into the Mythos phase, we're going to place a Doom on the agenda. Cho is going to grab a card. He has Call of the Riley. Okay, put Call of Riley into play in the threat area. Forced, when you would move while there is a deep one enemy in play, you must move toward the nearest deep one enemy or take one horror wool. After you engage deep one enemy, discard this. Oh, that's fantastic. All right, so he's got that card. Well, I don't think I'm going to be moving too much. She, on the other hand, is going to find... Oh, no, what is that? Oh, this is... It fits this way. It is the destroyer from the depths. Enemy forced monster humanoid deep one forced. When the enemy phase begins, discard the top three cards of the encounter deck. Draw each copy taking on water discarded by this effect. This creature's attention seems to be fixated on tearing the ship to pieces. Oh, and this is on her space, but that's okay. She does have that azure flame. We're going to use Jacqueline first. She's going to go ahead and try to take out the destroyer of the depths. 
and she's going to use her Azure Flame. So we're going to go ahead and discard our token, and we're also going to use the final one of our Scrying Mirrors, meaning I can look at this token before we actually draw it. So let's go ahead and see what we get. We have got a negative one. That's perfect. So I have a total of five, six of willpower. Minus one is five. This is a three. It's a two. Now I've got some things I'm going to do. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use this. We're going to go ahead and we're going to say we're going to make it by two, meaning we get to draw a card. So we're going to see what card we got. We have got our Astral Travels. Oh my gosh, remember when I made fun of this card earlier in the game? This is going to be the perfect card. Oh my gosh, I can hardly wait. We're going to go ahead and gain this card. That is perfect. Now, of course, we also have another card we're going to play. We are going to play our Persistent card. We can add this to our skills. It gives us plus one willpower. I'm going to go ahead and grab, what's here? After you commit Persistent to a skill test, name even, odd, or symbol. After this test ends, the chaos token of the numbered type, I'm going to guess odd. I'm going to grab odd token, which means I can actually gain back a spell from my discard pile. We're going to gain back clairvoyance. This is going to be the key to victory. We're going to discard that guy. That was our first action. I'm going to put this token back in. For our second action, I'm going to go ahead and discard the Infallible Truth. And instead, we're going to replace that with our Clairvoyance card, which gives three charges, which is what I need to have right now. We're going to go ahead and spend our three by using our Robes of Endless Night. And there we go. And our third action is we are again going to put out our Scrying Mirror. We've got another one. I'm going to pay my three and go ahead and put it out. Chill's going to go ahead and first get rid of this. I totally forgot about it, the self-destructive. We're going to get rid of his weakness. We're going to then go ahead and use his second action, which is to move into this location. It's exhausted, but I need to be there to find that token. That's his final action, so he's going to go ahead and exhaust himself. We have no enemies on the board, so we're going to unexhaust all of our investigators and move into the rest of the refresh phase. Cho's going to gain a resource, and he's also going to gain a card. He has found, oh no, his other weakness. Humanoid Criminal Syndicate Prey, Nathan Cho only is a hunter. When Tommy Malloy would take any amount of damage, reduce the amount by one. They call him Big, the Big Palaka. Nathaniel calls him Scum. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. All right, we're going to have to put this in engaged with Nathaniel Cho. That's terrible. I don't know how we're going to get rid of this guy. Moving into the Mythos phase, we're going to go ahead and gain a Doom, which then is going to go ahead and advance the Agenda deck. And let's see what it says. If I remember it, I just have to, was it, um, exhaust in a ready location with the lowest possible deck number. Then we go ahead and flip it back, and we're going to go ahead now and move into our Event deck. I am going to go ahead and exhaust our Passenger Cabins. That's the place I decided to exhaust. We're running out of places. We only have four left. Cho is going to gain a Destroyer of the Depths. He now has two monsters on him, and I don't think I have a way of taking these guys out. All right, and let's see what happens to Jacqueline. Jacqueline has found a Dragon Warrior. Oh my gosh, if things couldn't go bad, they just got worse. It's 4-4-3. Four, four, Hunter Retaliate Force. After the first Hazard Treachery is revealed each round, Dragon Warrior attacks each investigator at its location. The creatures brandish its sharp claws as it approaches. Oh, look at that thing. Awesome. All right, this is going to be fun. We're going to start with Cho. Cho's going to have to take on both of these creatures. I'm going to go with the Destroyer from the Depths and see what we can do about it. We're going to go ahead and draw our token and see what we get. We were able to pull out a negative five. That's not going to hit him. All right, so we're going to go into our second one. He's going to go ahead and see what he gets, his second attack. Oh, man, I don't think any of this is going to be zero. Okay, so we did one damage to him. One is better than none. We have hit him for one. We're now going to go ahead and try to take him out with our third action. This is what we have to do. We got a negative two, which is just fine because I have five, six, seven fight. That's enough to take this guy down. He has been destroyed. We're going to discard this card. That's going to exhaust Nathaniel Cho, meaning he's actually going to get hit by Tommy Malloy. We're going to see if we can get our other character down here. Tommy is going to go ahead, though, and use his glory to play after you defeat an enemy to draw two cards. We're going to draw our two cards. See, we got we got physical training, and we've also got the one that gives us uh, resources, which is fantastic. 
that's it. Now, of course, I also get to look at the boxing gloves. I only have three cards left in my deck, so this is getting really down to the nitty-gritty. And I actually don't think I want to draw any of them because I need to keep them in my deck. That's going to be it. He's done. Jacqueline now has to take on a Dragon Warrior. This is out of control. She's going to have to use her Azure Flame and probably shoot them both. She's going to go ahead and shoot off both of her Azure Flames. But the first one she's going to go ahead and use, she's going to use her Scrying Mirror and see how that goes. She's going to go ahead and reach into her bag and see what she gets. She got zero, so I don't have to commit any other cards to this. But I am going to go ahead and say that we have an even... Oh, no, that's not how it goes. We have those other two cards. We have this one. I'm going to go ahead and say, Location begins. Exhaust Crystal Pendulum. Name a number. If the test succeeds by that number or fails by that number, draw a card. I'm going to go ahead and call whatever number would be the one that would make this the right number. I'm not going to do the math right now to figure it out. I'm going to go ahead and put this back in here. And we're going to go ahead and draw a card. We have been able to gain, what is this? Arbiter of Fate. Jacqueline's fine deck only. Oh, where have you been? When you use Jacqueline's fine's ability, Exhaust Arbiter of Fate, this uses her ability, doesn't count towards its limit. Oh my gosh, that's amazing. All right, we need to get that out too. Because the second thing I'm going to do is fire off our Azure Flame yet again for our last time discarding the card. We're going to go ahead and draw three tokens. I'm going to use her ability to draw three tokens and see how we do. Here are the three tokens, and I get to discard one, two of these. I'm going to discard these two. We're going to do negative two. I've got a five, six minus two is four. That's still enough to hit this guy. We discard that guy, and we're going to go ahead now with our third action and find this clue. We're going to go ahead and use our clairvoyance. We're just going to keep casting spell after spell after spell and see how we do. We're going to go ahead and reach into our bag and see what we get. We got oh, an auto fail, absolute massive fail. All right, she is exhausted. That is the end of her turn. And that's going to bring us to our enemy's turn, and he's going to do two damage to Cho. Now, if Cho takes any damage, he dies. So I'm going to have to soak one of them by using our flesh ward. The other thing I'm going to have to do is use her. She's going to have to take the other damage. So I'm going to have to go ahead and discard her to keep Cho alive. We're going to go ahead and unexhaust all of our cards and our characters and draw a card. He has found his safeguard. That's awesome. He's run out of cards. Jacqueline's going to gain a resource. Cho was also supposed to gain a resource. I forgot to give it to him. And we're going to go ahead and draw a card. He has Ritual Candles. Oh, that's a fun card. I like that card. I'm going to put that over there. Now, again, I've reached my hand limit with her, so we're going to go ahead and just discard the robes. I don't need those. But we are going to unexhaust, of course, all of our stuff. We're going to go ahead and add one Doom to the agenda. Cho is going to take a card. He has found Taking on Water. So I have to go ahead and exhaust the Dining Room. It's the only one left on the second deck. Now we're going to go ahead and see what happens to Jacqueline. <gasps> She's also taking on water as well. Oh no, I only have two locations left. She's going to go with the sun deck, meaning I only have this card and this one, the bridge and the deck lounge that is not exhausted. If those two go underwater, the game is over. Jacqueline is going to go first. She's going to play a card. She's going to play her Arbiters of Fate and put that out. It's going to cost me three because it's not actually a spell. We're going to go ahead and remove the resources. This gives me the ability, I believe, to use my ability twice, which is going to be pretty awesome. For Jacqueline's second action, she's going to go ahead and exhaust her robes of endless night to be able to pay for our Azure Flame card. It's going to gain its four charges. It's going to cost her her last two resources. She has no more resources left. And the next thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and play our Astral Travel card. And we're going to draw a token from the bag. And if any of these symbols appear, I have to discard an item or an ally. We're going to use our Arbiter of Fates and exhaust it so I can draw the three tokens instead of two. Or I mean one, instead of one. <laughs> I'm going to draw two tokens. Draw three tokens. We're going to get rid of the skull, and we're going to get rid of the negative three. That's fine. We've got a zero. Totally fine. She gets to move over to the library. So she's going to end up in the library and become exhausted. Now it's going to be Cho's turn. He's just going to have to punch this guy and do it three times. The first time he punches, though, I'm going to use her ability and go ahead and draw three tokens and see how it goes. We've got three tokens right here. We're going to take the plus one, I think, is going to be our best bet. So we've done one damage to this guy. It says that I can reduce this amount to one. So that no matter how much I do, it's reduced to one. So I always am going to be able to do one, which is fantastic. So Nathaniel Cho is going to go ahead and try to hit him again. 
He's got only two fight, and I've got a ton. So as long as I don't draw something really bad, we should be able to take him out. So that's another hit with a negative one. Let's see what the last token is. It's a skull that's negative two. We were able to take out Tommy Malloy. We're going to go ahead and discard him. We're going to exhaust Cho, and that's going to be the end of our turn. We have no enemies on the board, which is something we've been doing really good at. We're going to go ahead and re get our characters ready, draw a card, and gain some resources. So Cho is going to go ahead and gain a resource. Now he's the one with all the resources. He's going to draw a card. Now he only has two left. After that, I'm going to have to go ahead and shuffle this up and take a horror hit, which isn't going to be very good because he doesn't have many of those left either. He has found his boxing gloves. All right, we're going to put those in his pile and move on to Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going to gain a resource and a card. Let's see what she has found. She has found, oh, she has found her weakness. Put Dark Future into play in your threat area. You cannot cancel or ignore any of these type of tokens. At the end of your turn, reveal five random tokens from the Chaos Bag. If a star symbol is revealed, discard Dark Future. Oh, it's the worst time to get this. I need to try to get these tokens. Now, sadly, this could be it. I have to put a Doom on the agenda, which means I have to advance it, meaning I'm going to have to exhaust our deck, lounge, and theater. The only thing is, if any of these are they taking on water, we have lost. Otherwise, we might have a very, very slim chance. We have... Seasickness. This is going to go to Cho. Our last one is going to go to Jacqueline. Jacqueline has found a clap of thunder. She's going to go ahead and draw her token and see how it goes. She has drawn a zero. So she's doing just fine. We were able to handle the clap of thunder. We're going to move into our turn. So at this point, Jacqueline is going to go ahead and spend a clue and test a three book. And let's see if I have anything that can help with our intellect. We have one card. And that's Gert Wagner. So he's going to help her out and go ahead and play that. She's going to go ahead and discard one of her clues and see what she can pull from the bag. I would use her power, but we're kind of in, we're with her weakness out. It's not in good mood. Negative one. That is exactly what I need. I needed a three. She has a three intellect. I gave her plus one, went down to three. We were able to do this. And it says, spend one clue, test and learn more information about the cult. If you succeed, seal negative five and add one of these tokens to Chaos Bag, remainder of the scenario. Forced, at the end of the round, if there are fewer than one, negative one clue on the library, you get to add clues to it. Let me see here, spend one clue and test. Oh, I have to spend one clue for each person. Oh, I have to spend two clues. All right, so we test, we had to spend two clues and test through that three, we were able to learn it. So we were able to seal a negative five and we we're able to add that final token to this thing. So we're gonna seal our negative five and we're gonna put our final token in there. So we are gonna go ahead and place this into the bag and there we go, it is all set to go. Now at this point, we're gonna use clairvoyance twice with her to try to get back some clue tokens because we need three in order to actually take the, them him out at the end of this. So we're gonna go ahead and spend two for our clairvoyance and see how we do. We're going to go and reach into here. Now, I know I probably haven't made some of the best choices near the end. I have to admit, this is a pretty exhausting Arkham Horror game right here. Negative four. That's not going to get us anything. We're going to have to do that again. I don't think I've ever played a game of Arkham Horror this long in my entire life. This is a negative two, and if you succeed, you either deal one damage to a cultist enemy or remove one doom from a cultist enemy. Well, we don't have any doom on any cultist enemies. So we have found one clue. We need to find one more, and I don't know how we're exactly going to do that. She's exhausted. It's Cho's turn. He's going to have to try to find him, and I don't know how he's going to do that. He's going to... He has only a two. He needs to get the plus one or the elder sign in order to pass this. But what else do we have to lose? He's going to go ahead and dig in here and see what he finds. He needs to find a clue. Come on, find a clue. Zero. So we got two. He needs a three. He did not find a clue. We're going to go ahead and find some more clues. Let's see here. I get a... Oh, a massive fail. And his third and final action. Let's see what he finds. A minus one. He did not find it. We're going to exhaust him as well. And he's equal. He's about as exhausted as I am. All right, we're going to go ahead and move into our enemy phase. There are no enemies on the board. We're going to go ahead and unexhaust our investigators, draw some cards, and gain a resource. Cho's going to gain one resource and draw a card. I don't think I've ever gone run out of cards in my entire life. We're going to go ahead and get to clean them out. I'm also going to have to deal with our seasickness here. So let's go ahead and reach into our bag and see if we're able to get rid of our seasickness. We're going to test three. This is negative two. 
So he did not get rid of his sea sickness. He's going to have to keep it up. Now, he didn't move this turn, so his difficulty didn't change. So we're just going to add this to his little pile of bad things that are happening to him. And we're going to go on to Jacqueline. Jacqueline's going to also gain a resource, and she's going to gain a card. Let's see what she has gained. She has gained Hypnotic Gaze. Spell fast. Play when an enemy attacks and investigate your location. Cancel the attack, then reveal a random token from the Chaos Bag. If it has any of those symbols, deal the attacking enemy's damage to itself. Wow, where were you? This is an awesome card. I'd have loved to have this. I also have to deal with this. We have to reveal five tokens from this bag. One, two, three, four. One more. Come on, Elder Sign. Where are you? Let's see you. Five. Eh, no Elder Sign. Too bad for me. This thing is going to stay in play. Our agenda is going to gain one Doom. We're going to draw a card for Cho. He has found Right of the Deep. Place one Doom on the nearest cultist enemy. If there's none ever on the board, we're going to find a cultist enemy. I'm going to just draw this card for her. This is going to be Jacqueline's card. I know. Well, no, I can't. I have to find the cultist enemy first. Here's our cultist enemy. How about that? We found a cultist enemy. Now I have to go ahead and shuffle the encounter deck. So I'm going to go ahead and shuffle the encounter. Well, I don't have to shuffle it because it actually was the top card. Jacqueline's going to draw a card, and it is the one where she could fall into the water. Or something about water phobia or something. So we have to go ahead and test her willpower. Let's see what she gets. She got... Oh no, a massive fail. She's going to take two sanity damage because it was a test two. Taking two sanity brings her sanity up to four damage. She has five left. She can take a lot of sanity hits. We're going to have to deal with this deep one. This called us the deep though. Well, that's going to be bad news. We're actually going to... It's engaged to him. She's going to go ahead and move one. Oh, she needs one more clue. Oh no, how am I going to find this clue? I think she's just going to go ahead and draw some tokens and see what happens. I don't think there's any way we can get back there in time. She got negative two. That's not going to be enough. She's going to have to draw another one. She got a negative two again. I'm mixing them up. Come on, I don't want to find that one again. Oh, we found a massive fail. Wow, okay. So she is done. He's going to have to fight this person. Whether he fights it or not, we're going to have to move the agenda up one, meaning the bridge is going to have to go underwater. We can't deal with that. That's going to sink the ship. We're going to have to read some of the ending. So no matter what happens in the outcome of Cho, we have to put a doom on the agenda. The agenda will advance, meaning we're going to have to, uh, if all locations are exhausted, each investigator is defeated and suffers one physical trauma. So we were defeated, and we have to suffer one physical trauma. That is the end of our game. Let's go resolve the ending. So here's our resolution. It says, if no resolution was reached, each investigator was defeated. You come to consciousness draped over a piece of wreckage floating on the endless ocean. There is no sign of the constellation except the flotsam that surrounds you. You think you feel something massive swimming just below and panic hits as you don't dare to think what it might be. It is then that you see the light of an approaching vessel in the night. Perhaps rescue is at hand, though what has been unleashed this night you cannot say. In your campaign log, record the ritual at the sea was completed. In your campaign log, record that the constellation was lost to the depths. And each investigator earns experience equal to the victory number in each card of the victory display. Which we did get some of those, but it's still we also failed and would have to suffer a trauma if we were doing a campaign. And there you have it. That is the end of Arkham Horror, the living card game. Consternation on the Constellation. That was absolutely an amazing playthrough. Absolute epic ride. I have never played a game of Arkham Horror that long in my entire life, nor have I ever had to reshuffle my deck, which I almost did. Cho would have had to shuffle his deck and drawn from there and taken a horror hit. I even had to look that up because I didn't even know what you did if you had to reshuffle your deck after you run out of cards and you couldn't draw one. An amazing ride. Near the end, I might have made some mistakes and some bad I, choices, mainly because I'm honestly pretty exhausted from playing that long. It was an absolutely epic ride, but wow, there was a lot going on. This was a fantastic scenario. I really enjoyed it, like running around the ship. Sadly, of course, I didn't even realize I needed that token until I was right where I needed to start using them. Oh, what a terrible way to find that out. If you did enjoy the playthrough, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell symbol so you know when the next video comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I would love to hear from everyone. I said I was going to also show you the rest of the cards in their deck. Well, you saw them all. There wasn't anything else that I didn't get the chance to show you. You have seen every card that these deck has to offer, mainly because I went through his entire deck and she only had two cards left. And basically the two cards left we have already seen at one point in time. 
Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the co-op shop.